full disclosure, this is going to be the longest, most detailed, most comprehensive Bridgerton video you will ever watch. I fully intend to rank every single named character with a line that ran all the way through seasons one to three, including Queen Charlotte. They are quite a lot. And if you stay till the very end, I will tell you what the final number of rank characters that I have came to. And I want you to tell me at the end if truly this is the most comprehensive ranking Bridgerton video you've ever seen, at least so far. Now, I sincerely hope you all have gotten something to drink because I have... It's cold, it's soothing, it's sweet. Um, I have something to drink right here because it's going to be a long video. So grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's get into it. Now, for those who had no idea, I did record uh, a similar video about three years ago when season one first dropped and have not recorded any ranking video since and I have gotten recent comments on that video asking me to do a, an updated 2.0 um, version so if any of you are wondering what on earth or who on earth is responsible for you being stuck with my face for the next hour plus because I have a feeling this video is going to be more than an hour long and editing Noria is going to want to strangle me but if you all are looking for someone to blame, blame the people that came to like that video and were requesting for an updated ranking because I live to serve and I'm sorry that you all are stuck with this. Um, also, sorry for the birds, if you can hear the sounds of the birds. Um, it's morning, it's bright, it's rained all night, so they're just very happy and I love it. Okay, so now... Just to give a rerun, I already had some of these rankings in the last video. What I did was add like four more tiers to it. So it is very long, but I do think that it's, it is fitting for a more comprehensive ranking video. So the very first, the upper tier is the seasons incomparable. These are the ones that made the show for me, that made every season or at least their season worth watching for me, that brought me back over and over and over again. These are my absolute favorite characters or characters I cannot stop thinking about because of just how perfect I think they are. Then the next tier, which is deserves a raise, um, I think that that is pretty straightforward. Some people should earn more than what they are being paid because of what it is that the Bridgerton characters put them through. And I'm certain the minute I said this, a quite a number of characters probably popped into your head immediately. You're right. The next tier is can do no wrong. And this is just as it is. These are characters that I believe are faultless, can do absolutely no wrong. They are just perfect in every single way. Then the next tier is wrong show. And these are characters that I think that because of the fact that they are in Bridgerton and I have to operate within Bridgerton's rules and Bridgerton's expectations and Bridgerton's story, they get a short end of the stick. These are characters that I think that if they had been in another show, things would have been much more better for them. And then the next tier after that is why. Why are they like this? Why do they make these decisions? Why are they like this? What on earth is happening? Why have their writers, why have the writers turned them into this? Like, there are so many whys that fit into this, just not why are they so annoying because that is the next, um, that is the tier below that, which is their royal annoyingness. And these are for characters that I personally want to reach into the screen and just shake really hard. Like, you know, when somebody is so annoying that all you want to do, all you need, all you can do is take a deep breath and walk away because prison is a thing. Like those are the level of royal annoyingness. And then the final tier is... This is Sparta! So those are the tiers. Now I'm certain you can already see the first set of faces. So let's get started. Starting with, and I'm just in case you cannot tell, I am doing the Bridgertons in um, honor of their birth order and also the way in which their names were spelt because I am not uncultured. And I think the Bridgertons would um, approve of that. So we'll start with Anthony Bridgerton. Ooh, <laughs> if, you've, if you watch the first stuff, sorry, I'm not putting him here. If you watch the first video, this would surprise you because Anthony in season one, for me, was in 
their royal anointness. But that is what a season two would do for you. That is what a season that is focused on your character, character development and character motivations, that is what it would do for you. That is what getting rid of that annoying sideburns, those annoying sideburns, that is what they would do for you. I know there are people that find the sideburns um, attractive and interesting in some ways. I'm going to say a prayer for you. You can continue liking what you like, I guess. But like, see this? Clean shaven, beautiful face. We could see the cheekbones. We could see the height of his character development. I, Yes. Anthony is the season's incomparable. He is the one that got the biggest boost out of all the characters I'm going to rank today. Because I went from barely, like, not even able to tolerate his ass to being willing to fight for him. Um, and he said, like, he brought that in with season two and he maintained that in the few glimpses we got of him in season three. I absolutely love him now. Benedict... <laughs> I made a recent, my last Bridgerton video was why the writers treat Benedict Bridgerton as the middle child because they just leave him abandoned and forgotten and just do not bother giving him any sort of story because they only remember him when the story, when like it serves for them to be like, oh, look at Benedict, it's about to have sex again. I'm like, it's more than that, it's better than that. So benedict you get a why like why did the writers treat you like this why are the car the writers unwilling to use luke thompson to the best of his abilities to the best of what he's capable of why do the writers torture us so why are the writers so insistent on just massacring a character that we all love like what what why why um sorry you know what i would put I will put Colin in Y as well. Why? Because season three was meant to be Colin Bridgerton's season. Um, as much as I love my girl Penelope, each of the seasons I've also focused on individual Bridgerton siblings and Colin did not really get as much focus. It did not get as much of anything, love or romance or whatever. I did kind of allude to that in my disrespect video on Bridgerton because there were parts of season three that I enjoyed but the fact that Colin Bridgerton as far as I'm concerned was sidelined a lot in what should have been a season is enough to have me asking why why were certain choices decisions made why were certain lines given to his character I mean who on earth thought it was in any way a good idea to have Colin accuse Penelope of entrapping him. And so, therefore, he has no choice but to marry her. Like, why was that a decision that was taken? Why? Um, The next person, the next Bridgerton sibling is Daphne. And I'm sorry, um, Sis is still getting the, the royal annoyingness because, like, I'm sorry. I, I think it was just the fact that what we got of season one was her season and she annoyed the heck out of me in that season. And all I could just think about is sis, first, your bangs are annoying Two, you are annoying. Three, why are you consistently annoying? She did try a little with the whole, um, season two of, Yo, Anthony, you've compromised Kate. What are you doing? She did try that, but unfortunately, it's just a tiny clip in an entire season of her pissing me off. Now, I am certain a lot of you are like, but Noria, Anthony used to be their royal annoyingness and he got a boost. He got a bump, right? They were both together in their royal annoyingness in my last um, ranking video. But, but, let's be honest. Let's be real. Let's be truthful. Anthony was served his character was served in season two and then finessed in season three and the only thing the only upgrade that they really gave um Daphne sorry I see something here I need to pick up okay the only update and upgrade that they gave Daphne in season two was that they finally got rid of those bangs which hallelujah I hate her bangs I hate her bangs anyway <laughs> okay Next, Bridgerton is Eloise. Now, 
everybody's probably like Noria. Because at this point, it's not like Eloise is like... The last ranking, I was like, she was in the wrong show, right? I was like, it is clear this girl is in the wrong show. It would have been better. She would have been better served. She would have been better served if she had been in like more of the modern inter reinterpretation of Dickinson. Because... Eloise was giving me pure lesbian vibes. And I was like, sis, why are you in this straight show? Clearly, you're going to end up with a man. Um, the writers have shown that that might not be the case, but not with Eloise, with another with one of, another of the Bridgertons. So, who knows? Maybe she's no longer in the wrong show. But what that meant for me is that what I have had to sit with and experience for a lot of season three has dropped Eloise Bridgerton down to a why. You know, sorry, this is not moving yet. Oh, because I was I was like, why are you not moving? It has dropped her to a why. Because now I am questioning a lot of choices that the writers took, like a lot of decisions that they made. Why make Eloise such a terrible, terrible friend? Why make her so <laughs> you know what? Nope. Eloise, say with your sister, yes. She, I'm, I am so sorry, but the way in which they have so destroyed her character, she's now under their royal annoyingness for me. Because why are you such a terrible friend? Right? First, it was, oh, Penelope, you never told me about Lady Whistle. And I get it. I get it. She's upset. Um, you know, Penelope basically took something that she had told her, something private, and basically put her on blast. Anybody would be offended about that. Do I think it was enough for her to break off that friendship? Honestly, personally, not really. Um, but it's her friendship and it's her decision and I respect that. Do I think that it was like it was right for her to keep go to keep going on and on and on about oh Eloi um your did you whistle down your lady whistle down how could you have done that and I'm like girl you were supporting your team rah rah lady whistle down get the bag rah rah you're doing things for women rah rah I love the way in which you the way she writes rah rah she's taking on feedback constructive feedback and I'm like sis the fact that you could not even see that something you told Penelope right with regards your thoughts and opinions about what it is that Lady Whistledown writes about and how she does not go further or deeper into certain topics and right there and then the very next issue she did that you should have clocked it as yo Penelope but nah she loves to hear the sound of her own voice she barely pays attention to what her friends are telling her and we see that perfectly captured with Cressida because like girl your friend was telling you that she was about to be married to this old horrible horrible man and everything just killed like went right through this ear and out the next eloise bridgerton is a terrible terrible friend and they made her so annoying i sincerely hope that you know just as anthony got his boost from royal annoyingness to seasons incomparable when we got his season um if we do ever get renewed for eloise's season i hope i hope she gets that because girl what francesca darling baby like seasons incomparable let's move you up let's move you up hold up sorry uh yes I keep telling you all that my system is she's very old and very cranky so please forgive her for how she responds and she's not very responsive to things i love her but i've had her now for my computer is currently it's, she's going to be 10 in march next year so this is this is like nine and a half years of dedication right here so forgive me but francesca bridgerton she's like i just i love book francesca and I consider her a separate person from show Francesca. And I love both of them just as just as equally. They own my heart. Francesca Bridgerton, I love you. Actually, yes, yes. The, the queen might not have called you a diamond. But honestly, the show has shown us that Queen Charlotte doesn't know shit. Because the seasons, our seasons diamond is my royal annoyingness and her seasons sparkler, right? Um, 
is my incomparable because I love her. I think that the depiction of her quiet, steadfast love with John just moved me on so many levels. Seeing her be wholly of her own, seeing her basically not let Violet pressure her into a version of love that Violet believes that she should aim for. And instead, she comes to her love and her relationship with something that is joyous and beautiful and calm and serene. And I am not necessarily somebody that is all of those things, but I do know that, um, I do know that I do understand, or I do, I have experienced that joy that comes from being yourself and on your own. I'm an only child. I, I love, yes, I have extroverted tendencies, but I only recharge at home. I like my space. I like my calm. I like my quiet. And I just, I love that she gets that with John and like she's a brilliant pianist she expresses her opinions whether she's talking about the the music that she loves or she's basically shutting down or walking away from the gentlemen of the town that are just stressing her out my girl is like i don't want any stress i just want to chill and find my best friend and marry my best friend and you know what girl same same um next is haha <laughs> gregory gregory richardson honestly to be fair i honestly think that i yes yes i think he can do no wrong i think he can do no wrong at least for now <laughs> at least for now he's young he's cute he's amazing he's a child i love him and i also loved him in his book actually to be fair because gregory gregory richardson book gregory is somebody that really loves love the concept of love and why wouldn't he surrounded by it um but show um, show gregory is just adorable but he's just sitting in one corner and um you know basically they trot him out but not in the way in which they trot out benedict that makes me think why but they bring him out occasionally when we need to see him, um, whether he's nursing a broken arm because he climbed a tree and fell or wants to be seen as like older, mature and is upset that his, his brothers are not going to see him, are not seeing him that way. He's adorable, actually, so he can do no wrong. I asked him, though, consistent. My girl, no, no, what am I doing? No, 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 she's not in Y. Computer, I'm sorry. Yes, so my girl is the season's incomparable. She's the season's incomparable. Like, I love her. I love Book Hyacinth. I love Show Hyacinth. Show Hyacinth is bae. The way she keeps asking questions, the way she's curious, the, the joy, the glee, the way she teases Gregory, the relationship she has with her siblings. She's just funny and smart and intelligent. And, ah, Hyacinth. I love her. I love her so much. Violet Bridgerton, honestly. Violet Hmm. Do you know what? <laughs> this is the first. This is the first that I'm like. I don't know where to put her, because she's either in read the room, or she's girl. Sh do you know what? No, not girl. Shut up. Because I do think that I sometimes what she does have to say makes sense. But she's honestly in read the room because sis, how can you not read the room? Not everybody is going to have the fantastic love that you had with Edmund. John Sterling is a perfectly amazing, brilliant love interest and a perfect, amazing husband, potential soon to be husband for your daughter. Read the room. They are in love. Just because the love looks different does not necessarily mean that it's any less the same. She's always like, oh, you know, um, the way she kept pushing suitors at Eloise. And I'm like, read the room, sis. Your daughter does not want to get married. Or at least she's not interested in any of the men that you keep shoving in her faces. The same with Francesca. In fact, if we really look at it, I think of all her kids, right? Of all her kids that she, that she basically helped, the only people who, you know, she was able to spot at the glance that, oh yes, these ones are together, is Daphne and Simon. Although, to be fair, that was when they were play acting for the longest time, which is why she was, she kept being confused as to why Daphne wants somebody else. But eventually the attraction, the love, the emotions does come in. And I think she was spot on with that, but she didn't clock Anthony and Kate early enough, which is why she was surprised at their, you know, at the way everything went down. Um, I don't think she saw Penelope coming, but she did clock that, you know, Colin was not being himself. And I don't think she notices that anything is wrong with Benedict. Like, ma'am, 
ma'am, ma'am. You need... Anyway. Yes, like I said, I'm just upset because she did not like John from the start and I loved him and I was upset because I was like, sis, you're blind. You cannot see what is in front of your nose because this is a man that adores your daughter and that your daughter adores as well. Just because it does not look the way in which you thought it would look does not make it any less valid. Like, read the room. She couldn't even tell the drama. Initial, actually, no, do you know what? To be fair, she did eventually figure out the tension between Lady Danbury and her brother. So she is a bit observant. So this read your room is not in general. It's just with regards her daughters. Because I think she's a bit short-sighted with regards her daughters and the best possible matches for them. It's not from a bad place because she does come from a good place, but yes. Edmund. Edmund. I'm going to put you in why, Edmund Bridgerton, because like, you're such a good, you were a good father from the little we got of you. You were a great husband from the little you got of you. Like, why? Why were you allergic to that bee? Why did you die? Why did you die and leave Dearest Anthony as the de facto father and leader of your house? Why did you die so young? Why did you have to be allergic? Why did you have to utterly des like devastate your family by going? I, I know it's not something he had any control over, but why were you the perfect father? Why were you the per why were you such a perfect husband to Violet that she absolutely lost all sense and reason when you died? It's not like it's a bad thing. It's just why. I'll just put him in a why, right? Um uh, Do you know what? Nope, nope, nope. Edmund, Edmund is not in a Y. All of those things are valid, but he's in the wrong show. He's going to be the first wrong show because if he had been in the right show, he would have found an EpiPen. If he had been in a modern show, there would have been an EpiPen. They would have stuck it in his thigh or in his arm and it would have been better. It would have survived. He would not have died from a bee sting. So, yes, um, wrong show. Wrong show. Portia Federate. A lot of y'all, like, if you're watching this and you recently followed me, a lot of y'all followed me because of my Portia Federantin. Um, I believe, I personally believe that Portia Federantin is a girl's girl video. And um, if that was you and if that was the case, I'm certain you are not going to be surprised at this. But nope, I am making her here. Yes, she's the season's incomparable for me. I know a lot of people do not like her, but as I established and highlighted in that story, in, in, like saying that story in that video, I do think that Portia gets the short end of the stick a lot. Yes, some of her plans and schemes don't really plan out or pan out the way she wants, but I do think she does look out for the interests of the women in her life that she's particularly connected or close to, and this includes her daughters and Marina. You can be like, Noria, I object, I, I disagree and all of that. That is fine. But that, like that, that, those were my thoughts in that video. And I stand by that. And that is why I think she's the season's incomparable. The amount of growth, the amount of character growth that this woman, that this, this woman has seen and experienced, right? Because the last, um, the last ranking i think i put her on a y so she was like a middle layer middle tier character for me and then season two came and all that thing that happened with jack featherington and i'm like portia i'm sorry i was not aware of your game you're much more better and much more interesting than i thought and then we got season three and i'm like yes yes incomparable season's incomparable for me i think she's fantastic and next up is my girl uh sorry let me see nope what am i <laughs> laptop don't even try it sis don't try it penelope featherington is always going to be the season's incomparable for me once again this is a character that moved from like a middle tier to like the top ranks she's right there with her mama because of the character development and growth she's right there with her mama because i Penelope Federantin, as far as I'm concerned, deserves the world. You might agree or not, or you might disagree with me. In fact, that's something I wanted to say at the start of this video. If, like, you can look through my rank rankings. If you, if there's any ranking you disagree with or you think I should have moved in a better, another tier, let me know in the comments. I, I am I am okay with that. I accept that. I love that. Um, but once again, this is my personal ranking. So, yeah, personally, 
She's a season's incomparable. She's ambitious. She's smart. She's cunning. She's witty. She's charming. She's funny. Um, she's so brilliant and smart. But she's also so self-conscious. And she's also somebody who wants love, who wants care. And she's also someone who is loyal, who would look out for hers, like those who fall within, like her and hers. She will look out for their interests and, you know, Sis is also somebody that is very willing to throw herself under the bus for the sake of her business. And I respect that. I respect that a lot. She's not a hypocrite. Um, I love, I love her. Moving on to the next Federantine girl. Prudence Federantine, I think is... Nope, let me see. Nope, nope, nope. I think she's in the... I think she's in the wrong show. I think Prudence Federantine and Philippa Federantine are both in the wrong show. Uh, sorry, sis. Yes. I thought I moved you. Okay, awesome. They are both in the wrong show, but when I get to their love interest, I will clarify as to what show I think they should have been in because these two girls, I love them. I love, like, I know a lot of people find them, like, maybe annoying, but the physical comedy, the lines, the way in which they deliver it, their, their, their own unique special brand that they bring to the series, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, Archibald Featherington is going to be a Y. Nope. Mm, nope. You know what? It's going to be, yes, I am putting Archibald Featherington under their royal annoyingness because, dude... This man gambled away his daughter's dowry. He gambled it away. And in order to cover up the fact that he has a gambling addiction and has gambled away their dowry, tried to mess up one of the most wholesome, healthiest couples and matches we get in this show. Because of his gambling addiction, he almost messed up one of the most brilliant love stories we were given in this show. The audacity. I find him annoying. And then when he was caught, he was over there crying. Crying into the shoulders of Portia because like, I don't know what to do. Like, dude, you should. You were initially trying to play slick with her. If she had not caught you like down to the fact that you even spent her diaries that she brought into the marriage, her daughter's diary. If it was that she had not caught you with all the ledgers to be able to see clearly, you were about to gaslight her into pretending that no, it was all in her head. You lying to what? You lying. Annoying. Um, Jack Featherington. Honestly, Jack Featherington is in the wrong show. Hold up. Let me, let me move you up a bit. Yes. Jack Featherington, I personally think, is in the wrong show. Like, he should have been in White Collar, right? Because I honestly think that he's somebody that Neil Cafferty, um, Matt Bomer's Neil Cafferty, would have really appreciated his smarts. Actually, no, he's not very smart. The brains behind the operation would actually Porsche Featherington. But I honestly think that he would have thrived in white collar if he's able to get Neil to take him on board. Um, so yeah, definitely wrong show. <laughs> Mrs. Varley. Varley gets, sorry. Um, nope. Varley is the first we are putting in deserves a race. This woman worked her ass off. She saw Penelope. She was the one that, what am I even saying? That's even season three. From the very start, she was the one that noticed that, oh my God, Marina is pregnant. She was the one that helped Portia in forging the letter. So she has the skills to forge. Once again, she can either be, it, like, it's either deserves a raise or wrong show. But honestly, I think she just deserves a raise because she, 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 she is a multi-talented, multi-skilled artist. So, you know, she helped with the forging. Um, she's the one that sees Penelope a lot. Um, that's, joy she had at penelope coming into her own and getting like getting married and finding love i was just like varley and then how she put in the her being the party party planner extraordinaire that she is and making the money work like she even got butterflies like mrs varley was able to provide 
butterflies. That is a show-stopping performance right there. Mrs. Valley, you deserve a raise. You will always deserve a raise. Um, let me see. Next is Marina. Do you know what? Marina. Marina Thompson. Ooh. Huh. She's not a season's incomparable for me. I don't think she deserves a raise because she doesn't work like that. And would I would I would I put her under can do no wrong? You know what? Honestly, I think she was in the wrong show. If she was in a show about how to successfully entrap a man, for example, or if she was in a show about single working class mothers, she probably would have thrived. Unfortunately, she was in Bridgerton and wanted to trap Colin Bridgerton into a marriage, even though Penn warned her not to, like, pick somebody else do not choose Colin and she was being um she was being bullheaded enough not to realize that she was threading on very thin ice honestly I think it was the wrong show because if Penn hadn't been in the show and if this wasn't a show that was eventually meant to get Penelope and Colin together as a couple she might have stood a chance she might have stood a chance ah Philip Crane to Sir Philip with love. Philip, unfortunately, we 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 don't get much of you. Do you know what wrong show? Why why am I saying wrong show? Um, because it's clear that his love is always going to be plants and flowers, at least until another love comes his way. Unless we don't get that, because now we don't know exactly what path um the writers are going to take with the story so are we going to get sir philip are we not going to get sir philip are we going to get sir philip but not in the way in which we're expected to get sir philip i have no idea but either way i do think that is in the wrong show because clearly this man is built to be on nat geo wild or something yes i think he's built to be on nat geo wild or to be doing documentaries on different plants i I honestly think that he lives for his hot houses, he lives for his plants, he lives for his gardens, and that is what he should like. Th that is his first love. So I definitely think he's in the wrong show. Simon Bassett, you know, <laughs> Simon, I uh, yeah. To be fair, I, honestly, nice. I'm wishing I had rewatched that video because I do not even know what the what was what ranking did I give him? Was it my seasons incomparable then? Was it the seasons incomparable for me? Uh, was he? Was he? Huh. Simon Bassett, do you know what? He's still amazing. I'm going to put him in why. I'm going to put him in why because why why did the bridgerton writers and showrunners and netflix as a whole not try and work out like a multi-series contract with reggie when they had a chance like why did we only get him for one season it was one glorious season mind you and i am grateful for what we got and thankful that we got what we got but i want more of him i wanted more of him so one why is it that we only got reggie for one season like why didn't they sign multiple multiple um contracts with him and two why not just recast him why not just recast him or why not give a believable story to us the viewers as to why he's no longer there because also now they've clearly um, we're not going to be getting Daphne anymore. But at least, even with the way in which they did um, Anthony and Kate, they already set up a premise as to the why. So we'll know why we don't see them anymore. But these two, we're, we're, not going to, we're not going to get him anymore. And they did not give us any explanation. No, nothing. It is very unfair. Why? Speaking of Kate. Kate Sharma! I'm certain you all are not surprised about it. <laughs> nope. Nope. What? Sorry, sis is doing. Yes, she can do no wrong, but she's also my sister's incomparable. She's also my sister's incomparable. I love her. I uh, Kate, Kate, Kathani, Miss Miss Kathani Sharma, now Mrs. Kathani Bridgerton, the Viscountess Bridgerton, protective, perfectionist, 
um, outspoken, brilliant, bold, funny, amazing, forthright, with a mind of her own, independent. I love her. Loyal to a fault, to the even to to the detriment of the people she's been loyal to. Her funny Sharma. I love Kate so much. I love her so much. I'm oh, sorry. I am squealing because I love her. Um, but yeah. So Kate is definitely. Kate is definitely a season, the season's incomparable. Next is Edwina, and you all know I love I love Edwina. Um, hold up. So I am putting her in can do no wrong. I love her just a tiny bit less than I do Kate. Just a tiny bit less than I do Kate. But she can do no wrong in my eye. I a lot of people were very upset about how she reacted when the truth came out about Kate and Anthony. Like, do I agree that she must like that point where she was like, have I been blind? And I'm like, yes, girl, yes, because like we could see it from outside the stratosphere. The aliens could see quite clearly, quite distinctly. That was happening between your sister and your fiance. Yes, sis. What is anyway, but I understood why she was upset. I did not like the, you know, her basically denying Kate being her sister, but I also accept that she was very hurt and she was, you know, she was reacting in the anger of that moment because she she did she they had played her for a fool for like the large part of the season. So to me, she can do no wrong. I am happy that she's in love, that she's married, she's touring and enjoying India. Like, sis, get it. Get it. Ah. Mary Sharma. Okay, so where to put her? I sincerely hope you all are hydrating because, like I said, this is going to be a long ass video. It is still cold. There's still flecks of ice in it. Ugh. Delicious. Next up is Mary Sharma. And honestly, I'm confused. Where should I put her? Not a season's incomparable. I don't think she deserves a raise. <laughs> She's not a worker. Um, can do no wrong. Nope, she did plenty of wrong. Wrong show? Is she in the wrong show? No, not really. Why? Yes, honestly. I'll put her in a why. But why in wait? I oh yes, because I was like, <laughs> it took a while for that to move. I'm putting her in a why because my own why for her is why is it that when Edwina said that thing, said those horrible words about Kate not being her sister, why didn't she check her at that point? Like, there's a way in which, as a mother especially being aware of the why kate did what she did like edwina was a child mary was the adult in that situation the adult in that relationship and she fell apart when her husband died and left it to her stepdaughter his child a literal child to take on that responsibility and of course somebody that has been groomed to take on that amount of responsibility since she was a child is going to be very hard for her to do any different as an adult and so when edwina who like i said is rightfully pissed when she made that statement when that scene happened all i was just looking at, i was like mary why are you not saying anything any of this anything part of this is your responsibility you should be saying something like what i was so upset anyway john sterling John, 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 John. Nope, not wrong show. Technically wrong show, but what for? But that is for like what happens later. But no, for the season that we got of him, John Sterling is this season's incomparable. I repeat, to see him be so soft, so quiet, such a great. <sighs> it just shows that extra layer that extra facet of love that a lot of people are unaware of that do not that we do not recognize that there can be a quiet love 
a calm, comforting love, a love that burns brightly, that burns steady and brightly and doesn't fade and will keep you warm and keep you comforted. And that is John Sterling. It's just, <sighs> the minute he showed up on scene, I was just like, bye-bye to all of Francesca's, all those other lords that were swarming around Francesca because I was like, you see this man, you see this man, that quiet, that quiet slot. Like John gives me that feeling of when a puzzle piece just fits in, slots in just right without any force or any extra effort. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. So John Sterling is a season's incomparable. God, I've forgotten that I still have a lot. I'm wasting time. I'm wasting time. I still have a lot of... <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, clearly, I'm wasting time. Um, Lady Danbury, she's always going to be the season's incomparable. Sorry, let me just move her up. I'm going to move her up. Don't worry. Yes, she can do no wrong, but she's also the season's incomparable. Like, <laughs> she's been consistent. Like, the consistency of my love for Lady Danbury, it started in season one maintained its pace in season two solidified itself in season three and sold to new heights in season uh, no sorry solidified itself in queen charlotte and then sold to new heights in season three like what is not to love what is not to love about lady danbury incomparable nobody else compares to her queen charlotte you know what queen charlotte is the same hold up Hold up, hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. No, actually, I'm putting Queen Charlotte now in Y. Which is sad because she dropped, she used to be season. I think she was one of the incomparables for the last, my last ranking. I'm not sure because it's getting very foggy. I repeat, it's been three years. But I'm dropping her to Y because why are the writers only stuck on... They've... Just like they've put... Oh... That was a loud bird. That startled me. Just like they've put Benedict in only one box now, which is Benedict the slot. They've turned Queen Charlotte into Queen Charlotte, the matchmaker and the investigator of Lady Whistledown's identity. And I'm like, give her more to work with. She's funny. She's charming she controls a room she knows how to hold our attention you can do better with her than just having her match make and choose the jewel the jewel of the season and try and force her match and always always fall fat on her face which regards the matches like queen charlotte deserves better why why, why is that all they've turned her character into it's so unfair it's so unfair. Um, do you know what? George, I am moving George to wrong show. Give me a second. Yes. I'm moving George to wrong show. Actually, no. Am I moving George to wrong show? Because George is either can do no wrong or wrong show. Can do no wrong, wrong show. Can do, like, wrong show because I do think that if he had been in a more modern show, all that abuse he suffered, he would not have suffered it. That abuse was so unnecessary. So he would not have suffered that. But would he have met Charlotte? I don't know. So honestly, I'm putting him as can do no wrong. I personally think he can, he can like, he loves her. He loves his animals. He loves Venus. Like, I too want to run naked in the woods, saying, marveling at the beauty of Venus in the sky. Like, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Um. So yes, I, I do, I do honestly it can do no wrong it can do no wrong right like he has mental health issues we all have mental health issues um he loves charlotte he loves her so much it's just <sighs> and in the moments of lucidity when he comes looking for her even amidst the fact that his mind is deteriorating george yes so king george can do no wrong in the show King Jog in real life can eat it, can kick it. Yes, can can eat it, can kick it, can suck it. So, um, Will Mondrich, I, a lot of people might object with this. Give me a second. But honestly, I think he's in the wrong show. 
I personally think it's on the wrong show because of the way in which they wrote out the last... No, actually. Is it in the wrong show? Is it in why? Because why did the writers... No, 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 I think it's in the wrong show. Because I think if he was in the right show, he would have been able to keep his bar. This is a bar he got by sacrificing his virtue, by sacrificing his honor. He threw a match, something he never thought he would do in order to make the money to own the bar. And by virtue of his wife's aunt dying and him becoming a member of the town he had to give up something that was so important to him that he had to put in so much effort and work to get like it's just very unfair so i definitely think he's in the wrong show because if he was in the right show he would have gotten to keep he would have gotten to keep his bar personally alice mondridge is always going to be the season's incomparable sorry let me let me move her up let me move her up She's been this, she's been the Scissors Incomparable since the very first season, and she's going to maintain that slot. <laughs> because even down to, you know, her initially being all like, oh, she's trying to respect her aunt, and then realizing that she can, you know, pave her own way. She does it with style, she does it with grace, she does it with class. I love her. Um, I'm a bit sad because she had to be the one to basically tell her husband, like, even when she was basically trying to get Will to understand the severity of him needing to give up his bar, she wasn't still forcing it on him. It was still his decision, but it was more of a case of you're losing, you're not able to keep track of all of these milestones of the kids as they acclimatize to our new world because you're not here. And, um, you know... She was right in that regard. I just, like I said, Will is in the wrong show. But she, she is a season's incomparable. Um, next person, Madame Delacroix. Madame Delacroix. Madame Delacroix is deaf. She definitely needs a raise. Hold up. Let me, let me, let me, let me. She needs a raise. She needs a commission. She needs to be, she needs to have stuff boosted for her. Because this woman has the patient of a saint she's helping she's running her own business she's helping um, penelope run part of her business she's offering life advice to penelope for free without any added charge she's being the therapist she's being the gossip spreader the gossip monger she's being the their designer sis is doing it all L like let's be honest genevieve delacroix deserves a raise she deserves a raise i i sincerely hope that she worked out a sort of up like up payment with penelope because she's more than earned it. More than earned it. Next is Sienna. Sienna is in the wrong show. Like, it is clear that Sienna is in the wrong show. Because, um, unfortunately, Bridgerton is a show where um, our love interest have to meet our main characters. And it's been written in a way whereby, um, if you are not the love interest, you do not stand a chance. And so, her forbidden love, the opera singer that... Um, that Anthony would otherwise have gotten together with. And, you know, she's also falling for him. And she's just a girl trying to make her own way. Like, she deserves her own show and her own series where she's this working class girl, like a maid in Manhattan, right? A maid in Manhattan, but a for opera singer. So, singer in Mayfair. <laughs> Right, sing. She deserves a show called Singer in Mayfair, where she, you know, catches the eye of some widower. It's best for him to be a widower because the way in which the tons they have issues. So, where she catches the attention of some widower somewhere, and then he's like, oh, "I love you, um, Jomape." No, not Jomape. What is what what is, what is love? The time. What is love? <gasps> Te amo, but is Te amo French? <laughs> La vie en rose? I don't know. Please, if you speak any sort of French in the comments, what is I love you in French? Je time? Is it? Am I right? I, I've not taken French classes in about 17 years. So my mind is just drawing a blank. I am so sorry. <gasps> anyway. She deserves to meet a widower who is like, I love you. And then he marries her and he already has kids and legitimate heirs. But, you know, he marries her. He puts her up. She falls in love. They have kids. They have a happy ever after. Like, that, that's what she is. She, she's in the wrong show. Um, someone else who is in the wrong show is definitely Albion. 
Now, I remember I mentioned earlier that I was going to say why um, Philippa is in the wrong show when I get to Albion. And that is because I do believe that these two, Albion and Philippa, are in the wrong show. They should be in a show where they are basically touring the country, looking at different forms of cheese. Like, just imagine that. Like, they're like sharing our love for cheese with the world and with each other right like something like that or maybe they should maybe maybe not a show maybe they should start they should have a youtube channel right they should drive a, a van across the countryside just showing us different cheese and helping us be like oh look at them and you know make a lot of they'll make a lot of cheese puns and talk about and would be like how cheesy their love is but we'll just gobble it up because of course they're adorable and we love them and everything else like do you all see it or is it just me do you all see it or is it just me because I see it. I think that they would be, it would be an incredible, incredible show to show their love for each other and cheese. I'm telling you. Um, another person who is in the wrong show, Ari Dankworth. Ari Dankworth is Prudence's husband. And here is why I said that. Because remember, I also said that when I get to Prudence's husband, I will say what show I think they should, like why I think they're in the wrong show. Ari and Prudence are totally given we are in a bdsm marriage and nobody else in the town knows because like i'm telling you somebody made a comment in one of my videos i think it was my disrespect video when they're like oh the way in which um ari and prudence act they don't act, i'm like they don't act that in love or something like that and i and like is it like or does he get off of it and i'm like he gets off on it he gets off of it i honestly like ari ari dankworth was upset and sad when he was, remember that scene when um philippa and albion and harry were commiserating about how much prudence is not saying anything because prudence was obsessed about the fact that Portia was paying all that attention to penelope now that penelope was about to get married and all of that and you know um Philippa was like, oh, she's not called me stupid or something or said that I'm not smart, blah, blah, blah. And Harry was like, she's not eat my hand away when I tried to grab it. And it looks so sad. I honestly think that they have so much BDSM undertones in their relationship. They are giving 50 shades, but make it Mayfair. It's 50 shades, but make it Mayfair. Like, she is the dumb. She's totally dumb in his ass. And he's just so happy. He's so happy. Every time she snaps at him, every time she deigns to give him a smidgen of affection, it drives him crazy. It drives him wild. So I think that that part where Portia is like, oh, you're just very pretty, but that's all. I'm like, no, 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 that's not all that's about him, Portia. It's very pretty, but it's also the sub that your girl needs. It's also the sub that your girl needs. He's the sub. She's the dumb that he needs in his life. And that is why they're having a happy marriage. I'm telling you, if this was a Marquis de Sade type drama, they would have pushed it well like yes I, I, I'm, I'm convinced they're in the wrong show they should have been doing some kinks harry would weep at the sight and sound and feel of leather <laughs> he would jump he would jump at the crack of a whip i'm just saying i'm just saying um next up theo theo is in the wrong show Theo is in the wrong show. The reason why Theo is in the wrong show is because he was over here, you know, doing stuff like bonding with Eloise and all of that. If if this was the right show and Eloise was not totally coded, like, I still think that they might make her queer in some way, but maybe they might not. Now that, you know, they've given that to... Now that they've given that to other members of her family, but... Or she might still be queer. I don't know. I'm not one of the writers... A lot of people were coming for me in my Michaela, why, how I think Michaela can work video. And I'm like, yo, yo, people, I'm not one of the writers. I didn't come up with this thing. I didn't come up with the idea. The writers have thrown this in the air. And I'm like, maybe this is a way which it could possibly work. But anyway, I, di I digress. And I, I digress. I, I apologize. Um, so, uh, sorry. What was I saying? Theo. Theo. Eloise, sorry, my ADHD brain, because my brain just went all circles, and I'm like, I lost what I was saying. Eloise, um, even if it is that, you know, she was not, she's meant to be full-on straight, heterosexual, and everything else, is not the final love interest, like, is not who she's going to end up with 
if we're following the books, like is in no way connected to who she's going to end up with. So the lonely boy from the tracks falls in love with a girl from the other side of town. See, that is a show. That is a movie. That is a genre that he would have thrived in if he had been in that show. Unfortunately for Theo, he isn't in that show. And so, um, sorry. Sorry for Theo, but no. Araminta Kalpa. Araminta Kalpa. Do you know what? Huh, let me see. I need to take a drink for this while I think about it. Araminta, Araminta. Hmm. <sighs> this is hard, but I'll put her in uh Y, I think. Should I put her in a Y? Nope, 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 nope. Should I put her in read the room? She's not oblivious though. No, she's actually very perceptive, especially when she pointed out that. Because mm. I don't find her annoying. I just think why. I just think why. Why didn't she stand up for Cressida? Like I get it. Salesman was abusing her. And for those that do not know, financial abuse is a thing. Um, and it is a form of abuse, a valid form of abuse. And that is what Lord Cowper was using to keep her and Cressida, um, to keep them in line. So he is, she did marry somebody who is abusive. Um, and, but it still pains me because even in that final shot of Cressida being taken away and leaving and all of that, she, she did not even pay any attention to her she didn't pay any attention to her like she didn't offer her uh some sort of she tried but she didn't offer her some like a valid sort form of comfort that i think that cressida needed in that scene um she, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to call her annoying because, like, sis even helped her daughter write a whistle-down column. Like, she did, she put in the work. So I know that she was trying the best that she could. I just think, why? Like, why marry such an abusive person? I'm certain that it was not her choice. But also, the what she could control, which was the little ways in which she could try and comfort her daughter in a way she didn't do that but also i know why you know what i i think she's in the wrong show let me move away because i i cannot i cannot judge her too harshly i am sorry um no i'm not sorry but i cannot judge her too ashley because she was trying the best she could with what she had and i think that if she had been in the right show if she had been in the right show um, namely a more modern one. Maybe she might have worked out a way to get a divorce or found a way. Maybe she would have been scrolling and um, squirreling money away. Because remember, this is also the time when women did not control and own their own money, which is why Penelope Featherington is such a revolutionary. But, um, you know, uh, it's, I just think about it that modern show, she would have set aside money. She would have been able to take care of her daughter. Um, they wouldn't have needed, they wouldn't have needed a husband to the extent where it could be so controlling or she would have found a way to just like sort herself out and get her money so i think he's i think she's in the wrong show i honestly think she's in the wrong show because she would have done better she just was hampered right she was just hampered lord cowper girl shut the f every single time he opens his mouth i just want him to shut up <sighs> it's not annoying because Maybe the reason why I am not as annoyed with him is because we do not get enough of him, right? No one, no mama saying. Mm, nope. Lord Cowper. This is Sparta! Because he's the very first this is Sparta we get. Because initially I was like, oh, you know, he doesn't show. But I'm like, no, 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 no. This man is abusing, is financially abusing his wife and daughter. This man basically was trying to force his 
daughter to marry a, a, a man so geriatric. It could have been her grandfather. This man is, uh, is thrilled at the thought of his daughter going to live with his also abusive sister. This man was foul about his daughter getting a visit from her friend. This man needs to be pushed down a hole, never to be seen again. Lord Cowper, this is this 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 right here is for you. This right here is for you. Okay. Um, Cressida Cowper, wrong show. Wrong show. Because honestly, girl, I am so sorry that you had to go through all the nonsense you had to go through. She's in the wrong show because if she was in the right show, she would have had a better friend. It would not have been, it would not have been Eloise. If she was in the right show, her better friend who knew or is aware of who the writer of Who Lady Whistledown is would have been paying attention to her concerns. And so therefore, her better friend would have spoken. Like a better friend who is who would be aware of why she needs money and knows what she's facing would have gone to meet Penelope and been like, okay, Lady Whistledown, can you please write something to help salvage Cressida's reputation because this is what is about to happen. Her father is about to marry her off to this awful, god-awful man. Like, if she had been in a better show, she would have had better options. If she had been in another show, she would have had better options and the mess that they did with her character at the end wouldn't have happened. So, Cressida, baby, I am so sorry you're in the wrong show. You're in the wrong show. Lord Marcus Anderson, Lady Danbury. Okay, hold up. Let me see. Uh, sorry, hold up. Let me see. 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 Lady Danbury's brother, Lord Marcus Anderson. I am, of course, moving him to can do no wrong because, to be fair, he can do no wrong as far as I am concerned. Um, as far as I, me, and my family are concerned, he's about to clap them, like, he's about to clap Vowler's cheeks. <laughs> I'm sorry that was inappropriate. But then again, you know I do say some inappropriate things on my channel. Um, but like he is here, he makes up with his sister, he finds a new love, he's very clear about who he wants, no matter how many women and widows that his sister was tossing in his side in his path. And he apologized about, you know, um something he did, what he did as a child that you know she was she was upset about, and rightfully so. And he also was at, was willing to admit, and it was not forced out of him. He had self awareness, unlike a certain Colin Bridgerton. <sighs> Colin, you deserve better. Anyway, sorry. Um, he had the self awareness to be able to admit that oh, he did envy her, and she terrified him. And I'm like, bro, bruh, I get it. Lady Danbury terrifies me as well. I am. I don't know if I'm in love with her. I just want to worship at her feet. Either way, she's awesome, isn't she? Um, but yeah, so Lord Marcus Anderson can do no wrong. Right now, he's about to have a romance with Violet. I don't know if this would play out. Unless... Ooh, because I heard that there might be rumors that they might be doing a Violet Edmund story. Like a mid-season break the way we got Queen Charlotte, which is not which I am actually looking forward to because if we get that one, that ties us over until we get season four. But also because I was like, yo, Marcus Anderson, we're only going to get it for a season and then it's done. But it is possible, right? It is possible that they are playing it this way so that by the time we have our Edmund Violet season. It's possible that, you know, the first half or like three quarters of the season will be exploring her love with Edmund and then she mourns him and then we fast forward to present day when she then starts a relationship with Lord Marcus. Now, the question is, how long, like, are we going to be seeing that relationship all the way through in the rest of the seasons? Yes, speaking of, that's true. Unless they want to do this to find a way to, like, get um violet married and off the show because how long is she, like if this show is going to be taking two seasons like two years break between each of the siblings we have benedict we have eloise we have francesca we have gregory we have eyes and that's 10 years like what anyway sorry if you had not calculated that and i just filled you with some existential dread i am sorry um welcome to my world and welcome to my club and welcome to my brain because now my brain is like you that is in 2044 40 actually no not 44 sorry <laughs> I, 
I promise, I know math. Um, 2034. Oh my God. I was saying 44 because I would be 44 then. So, yeah, your girl is not getting any younger. Sorry, that was off key. Lady Tilly Arnold, like, if you watched my, um, if you watch my disrespect video, you know that I want to sink to this woman, to my knees in front of this woman. So, of course, she's the season's incomparable for me, to me, for me. She's wealthy. She's gorgeous. She's sexy. She's sensual. She's intelligent. She's outspoken. She, she's not afraid to say her mind even in a room filled with men. She would call things as it is. She's passionate about the things she's passionate about. What is not to love about Lady Tilly Arnold? And I've heard that this actress that plays her is in Black Sails, which is a show I intend to start soon because the hold that she has on me, the hold that she has on me. Oh my God. Ooh. 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 Okay. Oh my, I still have people. <laughs> we've been here for editing is going to be a bitch i need to speed it i need to speed things up <sighs> next up is reynolds reynolds is definitely in the wrong show hold up let me let me let me move you okay so hold up reynolds is clearly in the wrong show and while i'm at it i'm going to move brimsley as well to the wrong show why because like these two are just absolutely fantastic reynolds looking after george grimsley looking after charlotte both of them in love with each other having that forbidden love that scene that final shot in queen charlotte of grimsley dancing alone broke my heart and like the fact that they could not be together in their world at that time is just something that i find particularly painful and they're in the wrong show because if they were in the right show if they were in a more modern show or if they were in a show like dickinson where you know um people are allowed to be loud and queer then they would have thrived and i know you all are probably about to come and be like noria you see this is the reason why michaela does not work i already said it that once again it is the writers doing with this what they will i've already stated in that how it could possibly work um am i upset that because of the fact that the the writers did not realize that this is a path that they wanted to tow they basically set some things up to contradict their story in previous seasons and previous stories yes because now i'm like yo you could have just given brimsley and reynolds a happy ever after i'm still pissed about that um so i'm not going to discount and say that that i don't find that upsetting but also, like I said, it's the writers, it's what they want to do with the story. I'm just here for the ride and to see how it all plays out and hopefully have a great solid time. Um, but yes, like the idea work show, if they were in a more modern show, they would have ended up together. And it's just Reynolds and Brimsley. I love them so much. Ah, uh, the Dowager Princess Augusta, George's mother. Okay. Do you know what? I honestly think I'm going to put her in read the room, right? Read the room because th there are some things, some casual things that she said, the whole intruding on privacy, wanting to know if their marriage has been consummated. A lot of the drama that we experienced in, Sh in Queen Charlotte was because um, Princess Augusta was having a conversation either with George or with Charlotte that either George or or Charlotte overheard. And then we got angst. I'm like, sis, you... <sighs> let these kids work things out themselves. Read the room. They were falling in love. They were happy. She was always going to come in. I get it. Because everything she was doing was for the sake of her child, of her son. I get that. But I honestly wanted her to read... That part where she was, when, um, you know, it was discovered that Charlotte was pregnant and she was like, oh, I'm going to move into Kensington house. And I'm like... Excuse what? Read the room. <sighs> anyway, like I said, read the room. I'll put her in read the room because she was not reading anything at all. Jeffries, um, next up is Jeffries, and Jeffries is um Simon's Jeffrey is Simon's um manservant. And I am going to move him to deserves a raise. Yes. I'm going to move him straight to deserves a raise because honestly just that scene of simon being like why is this 
why is this um why is this painting here and it was like you know i was asked to put it up like i was just like jeffrey's you Simon going all wishy-washy with regards what he wants, what he does not want because he was torn and confused about his feelings for Daphne and that painting was one that Def Daphne liked and enjoyed and interpreted a certain way and Jeffrey is just like, I I'm just following orders here and I'm like, dude, you deserve a raise. In fact, a lot of the, a lot of, speaking of raises, Rose Nolan, Rose Nolan is the, um, is Daphne's maid and I'm certain we can all agree that she deserves a raise she deserves a raise because without her daphne would still have not had any idea how children are made how babies are made because of course violet failed her the mamas of the town seem to have failed all their children um but you know violet especially more so because daphne actually asked her and she said nothing she gave us nothing but rose rose gave us everything in fact I'm actually torn because I can either put Rose in deserves a raise or put her in wrong show because she should be teaching sex ed she's qu clearly quite talented at it but at the same time i'm like girl you deserve better you deserve better so um you deserve more money you deserve better and you deserve more money so i am putting her on that deserves a raise because that is she deserves everything still on the deserve a raise mrs wilson mrs wilson is the head um the head the housekeeper i just said there's no need to say head housekeeper because housekeeper already implies head but she's the housekeeper for the bridgertons and that's just by virtue of eloise coming to meet her and being all like are you lady whistle down <laughs> is enough for that woman to get a raise because the way she just laughed i was like i was like with all that i have to do bitch what i was just like let wilson you deserve mrs wilson you deserve a raise another person that deserves a raise mrs colson because <sighs> i just i just think that the fact that daphne and simon made sure that they were trying to have sex or they had sex in every single corner every single place she turned her boss was having sex with his wife personally i think she deserves a raise and i think that it should have been filed a warning because that is sexual um harassment is that sexual harassment when your boss is making you see his butt everywhere like you you should not be catching glimpses of your boss's butts in random places when you're just trying to do your job she should have been given extra she she deserves a raise and every single time you know she was mooned by either simon or daphne she should have got a little extra for the trouble because sis this this is sexual harassment at this point it was just uh henry granville also wrong show also wrong show you know what in fact henry wrong show uh lucy wrong show as well and lord weatherby and lord weatherby wrong show so henry lucy and lord weatherby all wrong show i think that it should have been there would have been a power poly couple in another universe it's still going to be historical because or maybe in a society where um being queer is not allowed and so therefore you know it still needs to in fact no honestly i just think that wrong show henry and lord witherby should have been in another show where they can be loud and open and gay and in love and it's perfect lucy granville should have been in her own show where she can basically have her own rm and have a great time and i would just be here loving that she's having all the sex and having fantastic times so i personally think that they're in the wrong show once again like i already stated with brimsley and um with brimsley and reynolds the show has a problem with continuity i'm trying to i'm actually very eager to see how they are going to explain all of this away because like your girl wants to know um but yeah so wrong show next is lord charles cho and honestly do you know what i would put him as this might this not sorry this might surprise some people but i will put him as can do no wrong right i'll put him as can do no wrong and why because you're like who the who on earth is charles cho and why are you placing him so high sorry excuse me i agree and do no wrong because this is somebody that kept trying his best he initially tried dancing with eloise she rejected him he tried you know 
making a match with um, with Edwina was foiled by Kate. He tried dancing with Francesca. She also rejected him. And he still did not give up on love because eventually he did bag the body that is Emma Kenworthy. And I approve of that. I honestly think that a man that won, he was not doing all them kicky nonsense with um, Colin when they were laughing about Penelope's prospects. It was never, it was never about that life. He was a romantic who wanted romance, and I love that for him. He eventually got it. I personally think he can do no wrong. That is just me and my three cents. Um, Lord Fife is the one of Anthony's friends. Yes, so next up is Lord Fife, and he is one of Anthony's friends. He's also the one that basically um, was asking Colin if he would ever, ever consider courting Penelope Featherington and was asking Colin about all of his travels and trips and all of that. And he's the first one in. Girl, shut up. Because, like, your voice annoys me, Lord Fife. Your voice, your face, everything annoys me. Just shut Shh. Shh. He annoys me. He annoys me. Next up, Lord Devlin! Y'all, like, everybody at this point knows... Everybody at this point, if you've spent any amount of my time on my channel, sorry, I'm moving him to wrong show, know that I love Lord Devlin. I think he is fantastic. I think he's amazing. I am utterly in love with him as a character. And I, I am paying that we only got him not just in not just not not in just in season three, but we only got him for like the first half of season three. It's so unfair because like, dude, you still need a wife. Where are you going? Cressida Calpa is right there. Marry her. You can travel to the Amazon and she can be happy and out of her and and Joanna's house. Like, come on. Like anyway, Lord Deblin. If you had been in another show, your vegetarianism, your veganism would have been appreciated. Um, your your knowledge, your knowledge and understanding and love for and care for animals would have been loved. Your money would have definitely been loved and appreciated. So I think he's in the wrong show. I think he's in the wrong show. He was just in the wrong show. He was just set up as meant to be this, um, you know, um, competitor in for for pens and and to get to serve as this push that. Um, Colin needed to realize that Penn was would soon be out of his reach because that that's the role he served and I, I honestly think he deserved better. I honestly think he deserved better. I love Lord Deblin, just in case you all could not tell. Next up is Lady Malhotra. Now, Lady Malhotra is the mother of... Hold up. I thought I moved her. Okay, because I was like, I wanted to move her to wrong show. Because, she, like, it is clear a lot of this, a lot of these characters are in the wrong show. Like they feed the show we we got because they're able to give us like you know added layers and serve as background and extras, but like clearly a lot of them are in the wrong show. And definitely Lady Malotra, I I absolutely adore her. She's the one that once she's Miss Malotra's uh, mother, but she's also the one that was all like you know intrigued when Cressida showed up at the Montreal's ball, and when one of some of the other mothers were like, "We should take our daughters and go." She was like, "Nah, I need to catch this tea. I need to know what's happening. I cannot afford to miss this." And I was just like, "Sis, same, same. Like you would have loved Gossip Girl. I think she would have thrived in Gossip Girl, OG Gossip Girl, not new Gossip Girl, because like." I'm sorry, I am always going to be a Blair Waldorf girly. Yes. So, um, not Serena. Serena was okay, but Blair, Blair was my B. Um, so sorry for that diversion. As I said, she would thrive. I think she would be she would feel right at home with um Gossip Girl. So definitely Lady Malotra, wrong show. Someone else that is in the wrong show, I think, is Miss Malotra. Wait, is she in the wrong show? Honestly, oh uh, yes, is she in the wrong show? Hmm. She's not annoying. She's not. She's not annoying, right? She's not annoying. She's not. She's just there because she's the one. She's one of the girls that debuted to the queen, and then when she figured out that Eloise and Francesca, like they were the ones in the modest when Eloise basically was telling them about, oh, the queen had not yet found her diamond, so there's still hope and all of that. And then she realized that, oh, you know, this is a great opportunity. Let me befriend this girl so that I can get all the first-hand information and all the dates so I can, you know, go further in my quest to find a husband. I think it's smart. I think she's very smart, but I wouldn't put her as can do no wrong. 
I don't put her as can do no wrong. I just think that she's on the wrong show. Because I think she and her mother will get along well in Gossip Girl. Where, you know, she needs a show. If she was in a show, if she was in the right show, where basically she's able to align with somebody and get the information, she'll be able to play her cards right and be happy and in love or whatever it is that she wants to get at the end of the day. So I honestly think that the show is not serving her at all. It's so funny because the wrong show has a lot of these things and then every other one is very scanty but then i see that i have a lot to go so <sighs> next up is clara livingston i am putting her in their royal annoyingness because this this bitch is the one that when you know the news broke that crested are basically admitted to being um lady whistle down she was all like well she's not surprised if she was an old maid like crested she too would take to writing horrible things as lady whistle and i'm like girl shut up you just debuted there is still hope for you to be the old maid and you will never even get the chance the opportunity the thought or foresight to even pretend to be lady whistle down like i was just so pissed in that scene like how dare you clara livingston how dare you <sighs> Cressida deserve better i deserve better we all deserve better next up is dolores storwell and i'm putting her as well in wrong show because she's the one she's the one that basically benedict had that one dance with and then she was making at eyes and google eyes and she was all over him and then um she was just the only thing she was sad about with the old lady we down was that oh she would not be able to get her gossip anymore and i'm like girl i feel you i understand you're definitely in the wrong show i repeat she would also thrive well in gossip girl where she just knows that all the blasts will come and that even if it is that one gossip girl drops the phone another person will take it up and continue the tradition so honestly I think she's on the wrong show. Um, Dolores, you would, I am so sorry, you would have loved Gossip Girl. Next up is our girl, Ray. Ray, hold up, give me a second, let me move. I'm moving her to, you know, deserves a raise. Ray is, um, for those who are like, Ray, 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 she looks familiar. Yes, this is Penelope's maid. It is Ray that gave us the opportunity one for colin and penelope to do that or pretend i'm i'm teaching you to get a man sequence that we got because she was the one that was chaperoning penelope through all of it and basically being there to keep an eye on her mistress but you know without her penelope would not have been able to do that she's also the one that set the stage and allowed Calling to see Penn late at night that then led to the case that then led to Colin basically having sex dreams about Penelope, which was when, what then rewired his brains to see her as desirable. And then eventually, you know, we got that hot as a make out ride, a make out session in a carriage ride. And then we got the engagement and the marriage and then everything else. So Ray was instrumental for Pauline getting together. She deserves a raise. In fact, she deserves a raise, a bonus everything possible just throw all the money because sis thank you for your service emma kenworthy emma kenworthy is the is the person that eventually charles Cho marries um there you go girl i'm also putting nice can, can do no wrong sis our only concern about lady whistledown was one she you know she wanted lady whistledown to report on her wedding dress and she was so happy when the news came out for cressida like oh that oh cressida is lady whistledown because as far as she was concerned it doesn't matter who is lady whistledown the important thing is that lady whistledown as far as she's concerned is doing great work and great service for their community and she loves her like she was telling her husband her fiance then charles like you see like this is why she loves her she's so incredible and i'm like girl you're famsing over the wrong person i'm certain i wish you had gotten some recording after the news broke that penelope was lady whistledown because i am certain she would have been through the roof ecstatic at the news ken is like of all the other ladies and the young women in the town who were being totally horrid when you know Cressida was like oh i'm lady whistledown and all of that she is the only one that was like girl would be is supportive of lady whistledown period and i i love that i love that so can do no wrong as far as i'm concerned because she also loves lady whistledown like we all do or at least i do i don't know about you but i love lady whistledown next stop is lady 
Lady Livingston, and I'm going to put her right here beside her horrible daughter because like mother like daughter. Lady Livingston is the one that was all like, oh, Lord Devlin is weird because of his interest in plants and stuff. But that's not why I consider her annoying. She's the one that said if Cressida had been her daughter, like if it had been revealed that her daughter is the one that has been Lady Whistled and she would throw her daughter out and i'm like first and foremost your daughter does not even have the range she can never be lady whistle down she cannot even dream of even pretending to be lady whistle down she's not as smart as penelope she's not as desperate and as ingenious as Cressida. your daughter is just average and just there just like her mother so she's annoying i find that annoying that statement pissed me off i am so upset next up is lady stowell lady stowell is dolores's mother and although we love her daughter and like this is not a case of like clara and lady livingston whereby we're like like daughter like mother because dolores stowell is much more charming than her mother a mother though is just as you know encouraging of her daughter making googly eyes at benedict after one dance but she was also the one that was trying to pull her daughter away from being possibly corrupted by cressida when the news broke and that's why she's in girl shut up because like what do you know also like that's not really the lady the real lady we saw down but she's not as annoying as lady livingston and her daughters like those two ugh. next up is winifred barrigan honestly and i'm putting her in not in why i'm putting her in wrong show because she's the one that basically was upset that lady whistledown stopped reporting because she had bought a new dress and she wanted her to report on a new dress and i'm like you know a girl you would have loved thrived in adventures of a shopaholic because i honestly think that she got it right she's resigned herself like sure just like all the other ladies in the town she hopes to make a match but she didn't make a match and although everybody else was like oh they wanted lady whistledown to report on their engagement on this and all she's like i just wanted her to report on my new dress because it makes me feel pretty and i'm like girl this girl understands that for her personally even if it is that she doesn't have a man, she at least would look very, very pretty. And that is just as fine and just as worthy of being reported on. And I'm like, yes, yes. I honestly think that she was in the wrong show. She she could have been killing it somewhere, fashion runway somewhere. It would have been great. It would have been fantastic. Lady Barragan, I'm putting that in shut up as well. This is, um, you know, Winifred's mother. And she was also one of the mothers that wanted to leave the Montreux's party when Cressida showed up because she didn't want her girl corrupted. And I'm like, girl, please, bye what bye then there's Anne Attigan and I am putting her in can do no wrong alongside my girl Emma Kenworthy because Anne was just ingenious right she was one of the people who was trying to get the identity of Lady Whistledown she's the one that showed up to the queen limping with her leg in a cast because she chased she was so desperate for the scoop that she chased after a delivery boy and broke her ankle and then of course she still came up with the O. Oh, I believe that because of that Lady Whistledown lives in like girl sis of course you're not very bright we know that but at the same time i was just like she still can't do no wrong because that was entity like this girl committed she was committed to the bit she was committed to getting the scoop and i was just like you know what girl i feel you same same next up is duke adolphus and i'm going to put duke adolphus hold up not read the room i'm going to put him actually yes i think i might put him in read the room i was about to put him in the wrong show but i'm just like nah because everybody could tell why he was so surprised that lady danbury turned him down i would never know because it was pretty obvious that she was not really into him but you know what no 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 he did think so validly and for a long time yes she just didn't want to get married again so i wouldn't blame him per se i actually think he's in the wrong show because if it was in the right show he's actually quite a catch right he's a duke is the is a duke from a foreign country is the brother of a prince of the of the queen um there's so many things that he has going for him he's funny he's charming he's handsome he's considerate he's just amazing it just he unfortunately showed up at the time when one lord ledger was clapping lady danbury's cheeks and um two she was not interested in marriage or anything like she had done her commitment bit to her husband and she was done and i respect that and you know what he took it very graciously and that's why i'm like he's he's very kind duke adolphus is very kind and i do think that he's on the wrong show if he was on the right show he would totally have gotten the girl L um, Lord Ermen Danbury, however. This is Sparta! Some might think that he's not as bad as Lord Cowper. And um, I'm just like, financial um, abuse, sexual abuse, all is abuse. And 
there's just some way about some how something about the way in which you know they showed Agatha's marital you know um marital rape on on screen that just made me mm, ick got me gave me the ick so every time I was just like I want to punch this man I cheered when he died I legit cheered when he died so I the first Lord Danbury Herman Danbury yes bye uh because like It didn't even look like he was in any way concerned about her pleasure and her desires and what she wanted. Like, he, he just... Nope, thank you. Coral! Coral is Lady Danbury's maid. Um, we saw her in Queen Charlotte. And honestly, like all the many maids in this list, she deserves a raise. Because she was the one that was making the baths. She was the one that was the confidant of Lady Danbury. She was the one that basically cheered like you know cheered with lady danbury at the death of her husband and then proceeded to fake will at the at the loss um she's the one that you know basically was like oh you should take out a blanket because she knew that lady danbury was having fun and um definitely interested in lord ledger like she was just supportive and of her mistress and protective of her mistress's secret and she definitely deserves a raise Ah, Prince Frederick, I would always say you are in the wrong show because just as with a lot of the others on this show, you could have, um, you know, it, it would have been the one if this was a Cinderella sleeping built-in retelling. Perfect fit, perfect fit. Unfortunately, nope. Um, Simon, the minute that tongue came out, Daphne was gone and you did not stand a chance. I am so sorry, my prince. Ah, uh, it's a pity. You did not compare, your tongue did not compare to that of a duke. <laughs> you failed in the competition, in the battle of the tongues. Next up is, I have at a glance, I had like full on here, the sons and daughters of Queen Charlotte and George, and I'm just going to move them all to one category, which is just why. Start with um, George, that's George IV, George Prince of Wales, um, the eldest son of Queen Charlotte and of Queen Charlotte and King King George III, and it's just he's the one that basically um, his mother was like george give permission for your for me to marry your siblings and he said yes ma and that was it right and i just i just felt like yes we understood their role in that they played this like all the kids were important in us seeing exactly the kind of mother that charlotte is which is basically not a mother at all i just felt like their scenes was just drawn too much it kept taking away from i was more focused on the past because it, it took away from me being able to really enjoy the past as well as i should because all my focus was on like these two people that are so in love would be such horrible parents in the future based off of what we're seeing they just drove the case of why why did we have the why did we have this whole sequence of showing them because it just made it to me personally it took away from the story i was being shown next up is prince adolphus also why he's the one that is in love with an actress i wanted to marry her and his mother was like nope next is prince edward i'm also putting him in why because i repeat i've already stated why i'm putting all of them in why but prince edward is the one that his mother basically forced him to marry sorry why am i putting him in the room is in why is is the one that his mother basically forced him to marry and the woman the princess he ended up marrying was the one that ended up giving birth to the royal heir so it did serve a purpose i'm just like why like that could have been a postscript we didn't need to see that Ugh. then there's prince william Prince William is the one that had already, that was basically, um, he already had kids. It's just that all his kids were illegitimate because he had them with this actress who was his mistress and his mother wanted legitimate legitimate heirs, so they didn't count. And she she also forced him to marry. It was the second son that she forced to marry that she had um, George basically given approval so that they could be married. Next up is Prince Augustus. Prince Augustus is also, is the one that was having an affair, that has been having an affair with a married woman so once again all of this information we didn't need like <laughs> anyway sophia this is princess sophia i'm going to deviate a bit and move her not in why but put her in the wrong show and i will explain why when i get to her sister in a bit so princess sophia um wrong show prince ernest also exists 
to just basically um also exist to just basically be like we need an heir we need a hair totally unnecessary why then there's princess elizabeth and honestly i am putting her in the wrong show as well but for a different reason than the other princess um, she, I'm putting in the wrong show because she was having fertility issues and she's the one that basically spoke to her mother and was like, you, you need to stop pressuring us about it. It's not as if a lot of us are not trying our best. You know that I keep having miscarriages and I just want to hug her. And I think she deserves to be in a show where basically, she, you know, she would actually have a proper doctor, particularly proper care to be able to find out why she keeps miscarried and uh, miscarrying all her babies and probably provide support and also have like therapy to have ash this out with her mother because she never does get that closure next up is princess augusta she's the one that was named after her grandmother um sorry let me move her she's the one that i said i'm putting in the wrong i'm putting in the tear for the wrong show alongside her sister princess sophie sophia and that's because these two were the ones that when their mother was sorry let me move her yes let me just move you here because these two these two were the ones that when their mother was talking about oh giving me babies and all of that they were just cons uh, like focused on the fact that they were sewing a bread spread for their dollhouse and it was just so cute that joy of finding your hobbies even though you know society is like you're too old and you should be married and they're just sewing bed spreads for their dollhouses and i'm just like sis you're in the wrong show if you're in the right show you would be old married maids maybe or spencer or you might even find love in your latter years but you would your life would be filled with your hobbies and the things that bring you joy and you will not have a mother breathing down your neck talking about giving me royal air give me royal air they're like they're in the wrong show honestly they are okay so this is still her this is still augusta um i accidentally uploaded a picture twice next up is prince frederick not Frederick, not the prince, not the queen's brother. Um, oh, sorry, I said brother, nephew. Not Frederick, the prince's nephew, but this is Frederick, her son, with a CK. Um, he is the one who hasn't seen his wife in 20 years. And I'm just like, no, why am I even saying why? No, this 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 man is on the wrong show. This man is on the wrong show. Because the minute he was like, oh, he hasn't seen his wife in 20 years. And I'm like, are we sure your wife is alive? Are we sure you have not killed your wife? Are you sure you're not Heathcliff of like Mayfair? This is very suspicious. I'm just, I'm just saying. I personally think that this is a murder mystery. Like, Frederick is from a mother mystery and was cast into this romance and did not know what to do. And so t told us about his wife that has been missing, conveniently missing for 20 years. Tw 20 years is a long time for nobody to have seen or heard from your wife, not even her kids. I don't think his wife is alive and I think he's killed her. He should, he's in the wrong show. Next are princes, and I'm once again putting them in why princess adelaide and princess victoria these are the two princesses that um the princess charlotte's kids ended up marrying i found a gif of her she's so happy um these are the ones that she ended up marrying and she's the one that basically had a baby um princess victoria had a baby also called victoria um which was what i was just thinking about because i was like historically the victoria that princess victoria has is the one that ends up becoming queen victoria of england so i was wondering if is that something that the authors might possibly do about working around the old inheritance things whereby you know with the conversation about the great experiment that was only done in order to serve the crown and to serve queen charlotte right um because in the show queen charlotte we get further understanding as to how the old conversation about the great experiment came to be so is it possible that you know queen charlotte who was desperate to have an heir um who was desperate for her family to have an heir all these years and when they finally have the heir and it's a girl decides that you know what i am going to basically turn this role in its head and now girls can inherit titles and you know positions and you know inherit from their fathers so that my granddaughter queen victoria can my granddaughter Victoria can become queen because I need an heir. I'm desperate to have an heir. Like maybe that's something that they might do. And it's something that would also be believable for Victoria, for Queen Charlotte, who we've seen so far in the story has been pretty self-serving with regards to her interests. I just thought about it, just tossing it out there. I was, I, I was thinking about this show when I was having my bath last night and that was when it came to me. Um, next up is Earl Alcott, who I'm putting in Girl Shut Up alongside lord butte who i'm putting in girl shut up because these two were the ones that won um 
pushed for the great experiment, right? Which was the only good thing that they did. But then they started, you know, basically trying to control and being very demanding, wanting to know things um, about George and how his marriage is going. And like, but Butte was asking if their marriage had been consummated. Like, dude, it's none of your business what they are doing in their marital bed behind closed doors. Like, mind your... B Shut up. Anyway, so Earl Alcott... Lord Butte, shut up. This right here is Dr. John Monroe, who is George's doctor. And I'm certain nobody is surprised that this is Sparta! Because I want to drop kick him. Like, I get it that he's a, he's a refl reflection of the time, that in that time, medical science had not advanced to this point. And so, therefore, uh, mental illnesses were treated in this way. It does not make me want to drop kick his ass into a pit any less so uh, i hate him i hate him so much honestly next is lord ledger and i'm moving lord ledger to wrong show because if it was in like a movie like unfaithful i don't know if you saw that movie it's an old movie but if it was in a movie like unfaithful like my dude would have left his wife and married Agatha. But then Agatha did not want to get married either. So I think that their relationship worked for them at that point. It's just that I wish that there had been more clapping of cheeks. Because obviously Agatha probably went on further after him. Lord Ledger was just the person to show her that sex can be pleasurable. And that she can take joy and comfort in her body. And in her sexual desires. And I love that for her. And I love that for him. I just think that even if it was that he was not divorcing his wife to marry her. He was in the wrong show because at that point, his wife was frustrating him to no end. He would have divorced her and hopefully taken his daughter like sole custody of Violet. I'm just saying. I'm just saying like dude was in the wrong show. Dude was in the wrong show. Ugh. This is Lord and Lady. Next up is Lord and Lady Sheffield. And I'm just going to put them in girl shut up because... First and foremost, the, the rudeness, the way in which they were rude to Kate and their daughter in this in that dinner scene was just so egregious and so horrible and i just wanted to reach into the screen and just zip their mouth shut because ultimately that blowout about the secret and everything being revealed of course we needed all the secrets to come out but it would have been handled better if these two if these two people are not i ju just thought to keep their bloody mouth shut shut like <sighs> anthony head hi the yes I, I do love Buffy. Next up is Sarah, Lady Sarah Bassett, who is um, Simon's mother. And I'm moving her into... Hold up. I'm moving her to wrong show. Yes. I'm moving her to wrong show because I do think that if she had been in a better show where there were like medical advances that could be made, her life could be saved. Um, she married a man who was who only desire was to for her to birth him a son so that he could have an heir and simon was the only child that she had and she died in childbirth because of the fact that there was just not sufficient maternal care at that time and it was just sad just wrong show wrong show rest in peace rest in peace you however lord bassett this is sparta bottom barrel bottom barrel Ugh. and i'm certain nobody else is surprised Nigel Burbrook. This is Sparta! Once again, hateful, hateful person. Like, attempted sexual assault, the taking advantage of, like, the servant, like, in his mother's, in his mother's care, the trash behavior, the blackmailing, the trash, vile, vile, man. like, you deserve to be kicked down to the pits of hell, and his mother, Lady Burbrook, is under their royal their royal annoyingness because she raised that she supported that she was acting like daphne should be ecstatic to want to be married to at the thought of marrying that like excuse what excuse me what audacity um next up is lord lumley lord lumley is the one that was courting adrena and honestly is in the wrong show because he was unfortunately in the wrong show. He, he, he had to, if it was that he was not cutting Edwina at a time when 
Anthony had his eyes set on her, except for the fact that Anthony ended up not marrying her. And so now I'm so upset for Lord Lumley because Lord Lumley would have been great for Edwina. It would have been great. It would have been fun. Anyway. Sorry. Hydrate people. Anyway. Lord Lumley. Wrong show. Wrong show. He had to not only be in the show, but he had to be in the show in Anthony's season. Like, you, you can't compare. You can't compete with Anthony Bridgerton. You, you just cannot. Even his siblings are finding it hard to compete with Anthony Bridgerton. Like, come on. Thomas Dossett, I think Thomas Dossett was in the wrong show. I honestly think that he was in the wrong show. He was given... It was given 10 things I hate about you, whereby, you know, my friend basically bribes me in order to take you out so that I can get access to your sister. And unfortunately, I ended up liking you. But then you find out, and unfortunately, he's in the wrong show because in the right show, that would have been his love story. That would have been him. He would have been the one to walk into the sunset, married to Keith, Miss Kathani Sharma. But unfortunately for him, in this show, he's also competing with Anthony Bridgerton, who initially was acting like he wanted this one sister but actually wanted the next and so um we never saw you again thomas i'm so sorry but yes you were in the wrong show you were in the wrong show oh lord greer this is sparta i don't think anybody's surprised I don't think anybody is surprised. Like this man is foul. This man is vile. Once again, she's young enough to be your granddaughter, and you're talking about her having kids for you. Having kids? Excuse me. You can even get it. You can think about getting it up. What? Anyway, and Joanna, I was, I was just like, and Joanna, shut your mouth. Like the minute she came in, I was all like, oh, Cressida has been spoiled. So many this. How would you let this happen? Why would you let? I'm like, girl, shut up. Like, and Joanna, shut up. Like, Cressida, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you have to live with this woman for a very, very long time. You deserve better, girl. You deserve so much better. You deserve so much better. I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. She deserves so much better. Cressida deserves the world. Kitty Langham can do no wrong in my eyes. I'm sorry. Let me move her up. The more I have, like, ugh, sorry. My system is just, like, hanging. She's like, no, I don't want to move. Sorry, Kitty. She can do no wrong in my eyes. And the reason why she cannot do any wrong in my eyes is because, like, think about it. This is a woman that married this general and all of that. And, of course, you know, Kitty, we, we meet Kitty at Lady Danbury's um, married women's um, party and all of that. And she basically tells Daphne that, you know, I'm married to the man. I don't, I barely see him. His kids barely see him. I'm living my best life. And I'm just like, yes, girl, you can't like, yes. She was like, I don't love this man, but is successful, is in the army, is never going to be around. And I get all these freedoms and I'm going to enjoy it. And I, I am like, girl, yes, yes. Yeah, next up is Lady Throwbridge. Lady Throwbridge was also at the wedding. I said wedding, sorry, the party that Lady Danbury threw. And all I'm just going to put here is that why. And the reason I'm going to put why is because although I do appreciate the fact that she's this widow who, you know, her husband died and the first she did it was throw a party to celebrate. And I'm like, sis, like, yes good on you good on you but then she immediately finds out that she's broke that her husband is penniless and i'm just like oh i am so sorry like why would the why would the writers treat you like this but also because of the fact that technically that was kind of meant to have storyline for a certain character in the book i'm not going to go into spoilers for those who've not read the book but that whole thing of becoming a widow and being penniless is a storyline that was given to a particular character in the book that has now clearly obviously changed and i'm still curious as to the why that change was made although I'm, i've accepted the change and i'm okay with it but i'm still curious about the change so that's why i have her in a why next up michaela sterling and you know i know a lot of people are going to be like why this this is like sorry we get is Michaela that we have in the show, not Michael. So I'm not rating Michael in this. But even if it was Michael, 
you all know it will still have been the season's incomparable so of course Michaela Sterling is the season incomparable we only got her for like three seconds and in those three seconds she has me in a chokehold I I want to know more about her I want to know more about her experiences I want to know more about how her story will be incorporated like I know that the writers like I get a, people's frustrations because you know, gender bending Michaela definitely does affect the continuity and the stories and what it is that has already been established previously in the show. And I get that. Like, but I did mention in a video that there's a way in which they could possibly make it work. Um, but once again, I like to reiterate, right? Like, I am not the writer of the show. They might not even go with any of the they might not even do it any of the ways in which I'm suggest I I I think they could possibly consider working with. This is just me posting theories because like this is what we get and this is what I'm, you know, I am working with and I'm not going to pretend as if like I'm not happy about it. I know a lot of people are sad about it and I'm sorry. I get why you're sad, but I personally do like Masali as a as an act as an actress and I cannot wait to see what she brings to the role and so therefore I am excited about Michaela but I have zero trust in the author in the writers so although I'm excited about it I'm also aware of the fact that they can totally mess everything up and it could be absolutely horrible and would you know it's going to be Bridgerton so it's just it's probably going to be yet another adaptation where I'm like choices were made choices and then i'll be like this is my favorite season and i'll move on for that but anyway that's about it i'm just just putting it out there that she's always going to be my season's incomparable she's going to be the season's incomparable for me because i love her and i love the thought like just a brief introduction i do not love them making it seem like fran was attracted to her at their first meeting though which is something i've been saying since but at the same time, maybe I'm just going to go with the director made a mistake in how he shot that scene and that was not what they wanted to convey, right? So, like, Fran might be flustered, but she's not flustered because she's in love. Like, those are two things that can happen. Um, <clears throat> Lord Samadani. Honestly, Lord Samadani is in the wrong show, personally. I think that he would have been best suited in a show like Cheaper by the Dozen because clearly he wanted a dozen kids. Like, which woman is going to birth that many babies for you if it's not a Cheaper by the Dozen spoof or spin-off or parody? I don't know. Anyway, Lord Samadani is in, the wrong, is in the wrong show. He wants too many kids. Like, not everybody's as fertile as Violet. In fact, of all our kids, the one that was the most fertile like her is someone you've not even met yet. Book book readers know what i'm talking about next up is tessa the model and i think i'm moving much faster now so fingers crossed that because it's going to be the longest video i've ever put together edited or anything and i'm just so worried that people are going to hate it or be like leave me tons of like review not review bomb because like it's not a book but like dislike it to hell and back and like noria why did you create a video that is almost two hours long who is going to watch all of this i apologize anyway next up is tessa the model um and i'm moving her here to wrong show because i do think that if she was in the right show in a more modern setting whereby she's able to basically be an artist be a woman and be an artist because by the time when royal academy of arts does allow in its first female artist i think or student actually i think it was like maybe 60 years after tessa at that point so she's in the wrong show because she's clearly a brilliant artist and the only way in which she's able to basically learn is by posing for the art students who are all men and basically you know drawing her nude body so like i said definitely wrong show type situation next up is footman john and honestly footman john you are a real OG. You're a real bro. I am going to move you. I'm going to move you up to hold up because everybody is not surprised at this. He deserves a raise. Like Footman Job John deserves a raise. Like I would say, I will say almost more than anybody else on this list, except for except for, I don't know. Anyway, I, don't let me jump into that. But I do think he deserves a raise because the, the thing about it is that. Eloise kept putting his job and his neck at risk, right? She was going in places that she should not have gone to and was in search for Lady Whistledown and this guy had to follow her. He was the one that was tailing her when she went to see Theo, was basically warning her that she's on the wrong side of town. He was, she was giving him part of her pain money, right? Yes, but the pain money is not enough. My dude needed a raise because Eloise Bridgerton was playing, was playing with this man's livelihood because if Anthony had found out, if Anthony had, if Anthony had found out 
footman john would have needed more than pin money to get him out of jail he would have needed more than pin money to get anthony's boots off his neck like footman john you deserve a raise because Elo eloise what like and she did not even see anything wrong in that she did not see anything wrong in that like blows my mind next up is lord ambrose lord ambrose is the one in season one who basically was the first person to try and dance with daphne you know after she was announced the season's incomparable the season's diamond and anthony was like he's a gambler honestly i'm putting him in the wrong show because i think that he and jack featherington would have got gotten along well with neil cafferty they should have just been in white collar and just playing doing white collar crime gambling and stuff and because like this dude was a con artist who basically was trying to get with daphne because of her dowry so he could make money to pay off his debts and if not for anthony he might have gotten a leg in so definitely wrong definitely definitely wrong show then there's lady ethan lady eaton lady eaton is the one i'm putting her in girl shut up because she's the one that was basically giving us the, the run like i appreciate her service because if not for her she was used for expositionary expositionary purposes to tell us about kate like no sorry mary sharma mary shepherd running away with I mean, mr shaman with mr sharma and she was all like she would have understood better if it was the maharaja but like it was just a common work and i'm like girl shut up thank you for giving us the tea we appreciate it but girl shut up so that's lady eaton for me next up is miss eaton like look at this face look at her happy face i am moving her to wrong show <coughs> and the reason why i'm moving her to wrong show is simply because of the fact that our girl hmm? what up what oh yes so i'm moving her to wrong show because our girl she does everything. She rides, she sings, she dances, she paints, she makes her own hats. If it had been any other show and any other person but Anthony, she would have been a shoe in for that wife position because she can divide and multiply. Like, she's good at math, basic math, yes, but math nonetheless. Like, wrong show. Because if it had been anybody else and any other show, she would have been the price. Next up is Ab Abigail Evans. And honestly, I'm putting her in why? Because of the fact that, you know, she was one of the women that Anthony interviewed and everything was going well. She wanted three kids. And I just don't understand why the writers basically had her be so befuddled at the simple question of, okay, so if they had a daughter who basically had a spending problem, how would she handle it? Like, I get it because it's to show that the women of the turn were very used to the men basically making all these decisions and thinking this hard about the situations for them and so you know that's definitely not the type of person but at the same time i'm like why put that away though because prior to anthony meeting kate it was clear that he did want somebody he was so controlling that he would have wanted a wife that would listen to and follow whatever you know trajectory and path he decides to take and you know anthony is everything is the antithesis i said anthony sorry kate is the antithesis of that which is why they get along so well and why there's that chemistry even though there's that chemistry and that sparks fly because they are so similar but they also work so well anyway like i said i'm just putting that in why because like it just felt like a very weird situation to have that happen i'm putting lord banel in why because it, it was one of the men like it wasn't terrible actually if i'm being honest and i don't think he was in the wrong show because we didn't really get enough about him and his personality for me to conclude whether he would have been better served in another show but the reason i'm putting him in the why is because he was he just existed for us like it's not it's less a wife for him and more a wife for the scenario that made where he showed up because when he showed up was the scene where penelope was crashing and burning when she was doing that thing where you where you overthink and your mouth is moving too fast because you're nervous and all of that and you're not used to the attention and you're not used to the attention and all of that and you're just you just keep talking and then you're just saying absolute things and you basically push the people away like that was the scene he served and i'm like I wish I got some more of him. Like, why did we only get that one scene, that one episode, and that was it? Like, I thought it was intriguing. I thought that there were other things that they could do for him. So, like, why? That, that's just it. Why? Um, next up is Mrs. Fenburst. Mrs. Fenburst, I'm putting her directly to raise a deserves a raise. For those that do not know who Mrs. Fenburst is, Mrs. Fenburst is um Violet's was Violet's um um teacher would i say teacher was less a it was less a 
would I say teacher? No, sorry, governess. That's the word I was looking for. She's she was Violet's governess in Queen Charlotte. So she's the one that basically um so yes, I've put her in deserves a race. She's the one that basically Violet was like, Oh, her mother was saying this about the Queen, and she was like, You never say that out loud because she had to reparent, she had to reparent Violet. Because her mother was saying all these racist things. And I just think that in addition to her role as a governess, she also had to be the one to basically be teaching and training Violet how not to be a racist person like her mother. So she deserves a raise for that. Like Lord Ledger should totally have given her a raise for that because the things Violet's mother was saying. Ugh. Next is Lord Basilio. And honestly, I think I'm going to put Lord Basilio in like a wrong show. He's in the wrong show. And the reason why I think he's in the wrong show is because Lord Basilio is one of the men that yes, Penelope crashed and burned with. But he's also the one that she was that she was basically talking and then he started crying over his horse. And I know they made that scene with Penn and Colin laughing, but I didn't think it was funny because I actually understood, like, I felt for him. Like, of course he would cry. He lost his horse. And I felt so sorry for him because I was just, I wanted to just hug him. Like, you know, in a way I was like, oh, poor Lord Basilio is crying and all of that. Like, he was tearing up, like full on crying. And I'm like, you're in the wrong show. You should have been in a show, like, you know, a show that basically is connected to, like, like connected to like the earth and being in love with animals like black beauty like if they did an adaptation of black beauty and cast but lord basilio in it like it would fit right in it wasn't the wrong show it wasn't the wrong show because let the man love his horse let the man love his horse next is going to be lord finch and honestly mm, do you know what honestly lord finch i'm going to put lord and lady finch in I sorry, not Lord Finch, because I don't think they are lords. No, Albion's parents are not lords. So I'm going to put them in read the room. So Lord and Mrs. Finch, I'm going to put them in read the room. Because of the fact that, like, dude, the fact that they could not tell that one, um, first Portia was just leading them on. Because that's all her fake crying about her husband's death. And then they didn't be like, oh my God, this was a wrong time, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, they, they definitely cannot read the room. And then they're not realizing that they are basically being played by Jack. In fact, they were the first people to be played by Jack with a fake, um, with a fake um, jewelry. I'm just like, you all need to read the room better. Because it is clear that there are people that are easily taken advantage of. Like, and I don't, consider it a fault on their part or a failing on their part because like they did give us one of the purest most purest warmest amazing persons out there and that's albion finch like i cannot resent or hate the parents that gave us albion finch they are too amazing even when it is that i want to shake them like and like yo why are you stressing my girl Porsche out but you know i get it i get it like they wanted the dowry and they should have gotten the dowry and it would have been setting if not for Archibald. But anyway, all other conversation. Next up is look at them. This is Augie. Okay, so Augie Bassett is the son of Simon and Daphne. And just in case you could not tell, all the babies are getting to, are definitely can do no wrong. And I don't think anybody would disagree with me because Augie is just precious and like babies are precious like that. So um of course that it can do no wrong like the the same way with this darling girl even though like i do not know why they are still maintaining that old thing of feathering things and their love for yellow um but philomena finch who is um albion and philippa's daughter i am definitely putting her in can do no wrong either because she's a baby and she's adorable um so like th that is pretty obvious next up is oliver oliver is lady danbury's footman the one that basically delivered the message that had her be all grumpy because it informed her that her brother was coming like was coming to stay with her coming to town for a visit and was obviously going to stay with her and she was like what on earth anyway i i believe that all footmen and all maids and all housekeepers are probably not getting paid enough um especially by members of the landed gentry so um definitely put in he deserves a race just by virtue of him being there he deserves a race just by virtue of the fact that he's probably had to witness a lot of the shenanigans between lady danbury and her brother when he arrived deserves a race like i don't make the rule and honestly lord and lady fuller are i think they're in the wrong show right let me move them yes i think they're in the wrong show for those who are confused as to who lord and lady fuller were um they are the the members of the town the ones that housed or hosted that that party the one that had the naked 
um, the semi-naked, somewhat naked artist dancing in season four. I'm oh, sorry, I said season four. In episode four, in season three, episode four, when um, Penelope saw that and was like, oh, she wanted love. She wanted desire. She wanted passion. And which was why, you know, she was kind of like asking um, Lord Deblin if that was in the cards for her. Um, so they were the ones that hosted that. It was their party. And they were the ones that were talking to Benedict and Lady Tilly afterwards. And, you know, they were all like, you know, how did you like the show and everything? And they were all like, oh, you know, um, you should have kept it. We think you should have kept your shirt on. And I'm just like, you know what? I love you. Even if you're all grumpy and you're like, people should have been more together. You're still a patron and supporter of the art and you bring beauty to people. And I think they're in the wrong show. I think that they should have been in a show where they are basically they maintain being this rich socialites but they basically support all the arts and um you know create an artist commune because i, I do think that i think they would do an artist commune but they will probably put a sign that says please keep your shirt on at all times <laughs> but i do think they're in the wrong show i think they're in the wrong show because like if it was another show they would have we would have had this kind of beautiful interpretive art like every every episode but alas next up is lord garrett and honestly i am putting garrett in Sh girl shut up he's the one that basically told will mondrich that oh you cannot be a member of the town and keep your and keep your pub and, and keep your bar at the same time like i get where it was coming from and i get it but at the same time the way in which he said it and the fact that he was he made it seem like a foregone conclusion just irked me i like he was saying the truth of that time but it did not make me pissed any less members of the town do not work and yet in that same season we confirmed that penelope is going to be allowed to keep working like where's the lie where's the truth make it make sense make it make that's that, this, this is the thing about the writers they just i'm gonna come i'm just lord garrett i just want him to shut up because i just like you basically pushed set this thing in motion that eventually led to will finally giving up his um, giving up his bar and although i understand it the why of it i'm still upset lord Gorin, i am going to add to why and the reason i'm putting him in why is because this is he represents something for me for like everybody in the ton with regards how things with um with regards how things with um um jack federantin played out because i'm like so why did the writers basically have it be a case of um how do i explain it basically lord gorin was the member was the one of the ton like members of the ton that was basically asking um you know what nope nope i'm not putting him in why i'm putting it in putting him in wrong show i'm putting him in wrong show because he's all he's still representative of the ton but in that from that perspective i think he's in the wrong show i think he should have been in a show that was basically centered around different scam artists like oh different scam artists and the way in which they work and then i like i was scammed out of my family's inheritance and here is why so he could have either been a youtuber giving us a very long two and a half hour video like this one that you're watching right now and I don't know who is still watching up until this point because this is long and i feel like i've been talking forever um my throat feels a bit sore um but yeah it feels like he's either going to be one of those youtubers giving us this extra long video about something that happened blah 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 or is in a i was scammed and you know this happened so instead of punked we will call it scammed the many tales of mayfair's biggest scam artist and then it's just basically each one of them coming to tell about their tales i'm sorry i there's no time for me to be diverting and spinning a story out of lord Gorin and him being scammed and all of that but yes anyway next up is margaret Gorin, and i'm moving margaret Gorin to give me a second yeah no she's not girl shut up what hell no um margaret Gorin is going to be in the she's in the wrong show i honestly think that she's the one that was extolling the virtues of the arp to anthony when he was interviewing for the wife and honestly i think she's on the wrong show i think she would have thrived in a show like whiplash i don't know if you've seen if any of you have seen the movie whiplash but i think that she's somebody that jk simmons character would really appreciate like it would drive her to make the up her entire identity and focus and religion and she would take to it like fish to water i honestly think that she would be fantastic in a show like whiplash 
like she just needs a show where somebody is like as devoted to the music and encourages her to maintain that devotion to the music that she has so yes I, I honestly think so next up is baby bridgerton and like i said all babies move all babies move to can do no wrong but bridgerton is colin and um penelope's son so technically is the first um because technically i would say it's the first bridgerton like is the Fed lord Federington, yes future lord Federington, but it's also like the first bridgerton's son with a bridgerton surname because like augie is the first bridgerton sorry i said bridgerton's son bridgerton grandson with a bridgerton surname because like augie is the first bridgerton grandson yes but he's a bassett um but lady baby bridgerton is a bridgerton sir hydrate people you need to hydrate honestly with the way in which have done all of this and basically broken down this story it is possible that if you've never watched bridgerton in your life i've probably just told you the entire premise of everything that's happened in the first three seasons and in queen charlotte if you're someone that's never seen bridgerton and watched it all the way to this point let me know do you have a clear understanding with the way in which i've ranked all these characters do you have a clear understanding of what bridgerton is about with my ranking like have i basically spoiled the entire show for you at this point because like i think i have next up is mary ann aylwell and she's the one that's basically in the interview when anthony was inter interviewing for a wife was like she speaks french and italian and latin fluently and then anthony was like do you speak greek and she said no and like i'm like girl is in the wrong show she speaks three four languages fluently and anthony was like sorry you don't speak greek you don't count i'm like boy you're just reaching at this point you're just reaching at this point it is clear that the only reason why he was not interested is because she did not, does not speak the language of insults because that is the language that kate has down pat and that is the language that anthony gets off on off 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 get off on and so therefore mary ann had no choice i am so sorry mary ann baby but like wrong show if you were in another show you would have been the star next up is lord rd and i'm also moving lord rd to wrong show because lord rd is one of the men that was dancing with um daphne when daphne was still doing the thing with simon to get like more suitors and he's the one that was very rich that was just that just kept boasting about his money and i think he's in the wrong show because he should have either been in the bachelor's where he can just boast about his money and women will throw themselves at him or he could have been in richie rich and then find himself competing with like a 10 year old boy about who is the richest person because boy what, what was that what 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 <sighs> anyway wrong show wrong show next up is mr harris and mr harris is definitely i'm pushing mr harris to um deserves a raise because mr harris is the one that works for the publishing publication company that um penelope penelope uses and is the is always kept her secret unlike the other one that went to go and blab to cressida which was how um penelope's identity as lady whistledown was revealed to cressida you know you know that if it had been mr harris mr harris would have kept it secret you know mr harris would not have said a word he's not eager he's not some young boy like all he all he, and even when it was that penelope came back and was like i need you to print this quickly i'm sorry for the short notice it was like anything for lady whistledown like that is a man that understands the stakes that is a man that understands the role he plays that is a man that basically is like i'm about my business i'm about that life and i'm about you know making sure that my customers are happy that is a man that deserves a raise give that man a raise did you just hear that in my with the give that man a shield um voice of t'challa from anyway sorry next up is lord hawkins lord hawkins is the one with the hot air balloon as you can see he's the one that basically the aeronauts that came up with the hot air balloon and i think he was in the wrong show i honestly think he was in the wrong show i'm grateful that they we had lady tilly basically try and you know be like you all are disrespecting this man's work and this man is brilliant and this is what you all don't understand but i think he was in the wrong show if he was in a show with like other like-minded scientists and all of that they totally would have gotten where it was coming from um so yeah wrong show wrong time unfortunately Then there's Lord Oli, who I'm just going to put in. Girl, shut up. Because Lord Oli is the one that came to come and meet the queen. I was like, he's, he's figured out Lady Whistledown's identity. And he believes that Lady Whistledown is a man and cannot be a woman. And I'm like, yes, 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 grandpa. 
y- yes grandpa like shut up grandpa go to bed grandpa like mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. i wish we had caught like through the scene in the crowd when penelope you know was revealed as lady whistled down just so that i could see lord oli's face because i want to be like sir does that look like a man to you sir does that look like a man to you sir does that look like a man to you anyway sorry i'm trying to speed things up because <laughs> I'm reaching the point where I am so tired. And so are you. Like, <laughs> I'm setting you out too. Then there's Lord Otten, who I'm also putting in Girl Shut Up because he's one of the, it was one of Colin's friends, friends, in quotes. And he was the one that was all like, oh, Colin is more fun, more fun this season. And I'm like, where is the fun? Is the fun in the room with us? Because like, Colin Bridgerton was very much fun in the previous seasons. Season three, he, he was less fun. But then again, I guess to them, him sharing all his tra- all his tales about his travels is what he considers fun. But yeah, I was just like, girl, shut up. Because like, you don't know, you don't know your friend. You don't know this person. Like Colin clearly is going through things this season. You just refuse to see it. So, and honestly, Minister Hughes deserves a raise. I think he deserves a raise. I think it deserves a raise because let's be honest, like how do the how do ministers get paid in the world of Bridgerton? Like I know, like for example, you can give a parish and all of that because Jane Austen does establish that in some of her stories. So I get how that works, but that is in Jane Austen's world. And I wonder if it's the same. Because for example, you know, with a parish, it's the people that contribute. And I just think that with all the things that you know Minister Hughes has to deal with and all the drama right all the oh oh my god this person has to get married some people don't even let us do the two weeks bands reading for example simon and daphne and um we don't really get understand how anthony and kate's wedding worked so we didn't see that happen but yeah i think i think minister hughes like he keeps marrying like in this season alone he married three people we know he married lodge cho He married Lord Charles Cho and my girl, Emma Kenworthy. He married Colin and the love of my life, Penelope Federantin. And he married John and my season's incomparable, you know, uh, my season's incomparable, Francesca. So, like, that's already three marriages within a space of eight episodes. My guy needs a raise. Like, and if it is that he has to, like, read through everything in each wedding and, you know, he has to keep reading the bonds and all of that. And all these people are just always interested in getting married and getting married and getting married. My guy needs a raise. It's, It's not easy i am certain it is not easy he's not doing easy work he's not doing easy work next up is dr hunter and i'm going to put dr hunter in girl shut up actually yes i'm going to put dr hunter in girl shut up because he's the one that announced charlotte's pregnancy yes but when she was having trouble in childbirth this man would have cost her her life if not that one george was in the room and two george was like no we are going to do this we're going to recreate I, i've seen this happen with farm animals this is what we do to help ease the birthing of the mothers i'm like if not for george this man would have cost us queen charlotte can you imagine and what makes it worse is that he almost was trying to talk over george if not that george is the king he probably would have i'm just imagining the number of like fathers who do not have the high rank position of a king that this doctor would have talked over them like girl shut up you don't know everything and george was right also she went on to have 15 kids charlotte queen charlotte went on to have 15 one and five one and five ten plus five she had 15 kids that's a lot of kids that is a lot of kids next up is lady keswick and lady keswick i am putting it as read the room because although i appreciate her hustle lady castle keswick ah, actually should i put her in read the room read the room or wrong show actually read the room because lady keswick is the is the widow that um lady danbury introduced to her, her brother um lord marcus with the hope that he would basically stop like turn his attention away from violet who is her friend to lady keswick and lady keswick was all flirting and i'm like sis read the room read the body language he's not interested in you he's not that into you read the room um 
I was almost torn between putting her in that or in the wrong show because if she was in the right show, she would have been the widow getting her life, getting a man. She's getting her groove on like Stella, you know, all of that jazz. Unfortunately, there's already a widow getting her life, getting her groove like Stella and all that jazz. And the widow's name is Violet Bridgerton, not Lady Keswick. So she had no chance. And I'm so sorry. So, yes. Next one is Mrs. Kana. And Mrs. Kana, I am definitely boosting. I'm giving her a raise. For those that are like, who is Mrs. Kana? Mrs. Kana is the Mondrich's new head, um, house, the new housekeeper. The one that basically they inherited from Lady Kent. Now that Nick Mondrich is, um, is the new Lord Kent. And she's basically... She's basically the one that was like, okay, these are the homes, this is the duties, blah, blah, blah. And then said, okay, you know, um, you all have to stay in separate bedrooms and this is how it must be. And I know a lot of people will be like, why would you give her a raise? That was horrible. But I personally think that the housekeepers probably have a group chat. And somewhere in that group chat, Mrs. Colson, remember Mrs. Colson, Daphne and Simon's like, this Mrs. Colson? Wait, where is she? Where is she? Yes, this Mrs. Colson. Sa Daphne and Simon's... Um, um for my um house housekeeper i'm certain she told her she was like they were just having sex everywhere on every corner it was assaulting my senses like i'm like should i not be paid damages for this isn't this sexual harassment of some sort and she was like got it noted and so she, that was what she told the montrishes i personally think that as i think they have a good chat and i think mrs Kanner was like i do not want this to be my experience and so therefore we're going to nip it in the bud real fast she didn't succeed because benedict bridgerton exists in this world but you know i respect the hustle and i think she deserves a raise hydration break also because remember seeing that she's the housekeeper she's the one that's probably going to be teaching the monjuches everything they need to know about running their estate and about their new positions and stuff like that like there's only a certain amount of things that benedict can tell them but they will need to learn through other ways and that other one of those other ways is her next up is vivian ledger and honestly i'm putting her in their royal annoyingness that is um, violet's mother lord ledger's wife um she's racist she likes to shut up her daughter even when violet is making very logical um you know sensible arguments and points and i'm just like girl you are annoying i don't like you i don't like you i don't like her at all so yes next up is lord labor and i'm just going to once again just as with um some of the other lords in this i'm putting her in why because it just exists for i'm like it deserves better i wanted to see more from him and if you all just notice a very marked change in regards to the light it's because the sun finally came out it's been raining for the last three days and so it's i find it apropos that of course it is when i'm about to finish my video that the son decided to grace me with with the presence with his presence for which i am thankful thank you um but yeah so um lord labor is why because he just exists for us to watch pen crash and burn in this epic way that i was just screaming why at my screen and just closing my eyes so um yeah why next up is dr lewis um is one of the two not useless doctors that we get in the show i'm moving him to need deserves a raise because he does he, he and another doctor and i'll get to that doctor in a bit both of them performed a miracle because um he was one or two doctors that was called to oversee um violet's birth when she was um birthing hyacinth and there were complications and like I say one of the not one of two not useless doctors because all the other doctors we got to the show were just useless. But the two of them they did it because you know Violet and Hyacinth made it well okay and um and this was even with Anthony not even having the experience that George did with farm animals. So definitely deserves a raise. Mr. Brooks, I think Mr. Brooks is in the wrong show. Mr. Brooks is the one, the jeweler, the jeweler that basically honestly I think he's in the wrong show no what am i saying no mr brooks i think mr brooks deserves a raise and i will get to the why right so let me first move him to deserves a raise mr brooks is the one that basically um resized um wanted to resize the engagement ring for edwina and then forced the ring onto kate and gave us that old scenario whereby kate basically had anthony's ring on her finger and there was that moment that connection and i was like mr brooks we thank you for your service you deserve money for that and then it didn't stop there it was also the one that basically at a glance was like oh the ruby looks authentic when it was 
um, you know, confirming or giving some sort of authenticity to um, Jack's, Cousin Jack's um, counterfeit jewels. And I'm just like, it was because of him that the Federations got the money because, like, if not for him, um, if not for him, Portia would not have had the idea that, yo, we can still market these things as real because this man is an appraiser and he could not tell at a glance that this is a fake, right? So he was the one that spurred that thought. They did all that they did all that schemes and all of that. Jack got caught. Jack had to go off alone. Um, um, Portia got to keep the money. And personally, I think that he was responsible for both um, Kate and Anthony having their happy ever after and, um, you know, for... Um, Portia being able to take care of herself and her girl. So personally, I think he deserves a, res- a raise for his service. He-, he has done, he did us well. He did us well in the fandom. Someone else that did us well in the fandom is Celia. Celia is Lady Bearbrook's. <laughs> She's right there with her mistress. Celia is Lady Bearbrook's um, maid. And honestly, if not for her, basically telling Rose about um nigel and the atrocious way in which he was he treated the 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 maid the maid he basically impregnated and all of that like if she wasn't the one that gave that that gossip and that the budgetons and their maids and their um housekeeper basically spread around and that then got to lady whistle down and then he was driven out of town and thus therefore daphne was able to avoid getting being married to nigel i on honestly i think a lot of people you know um do not give Celia the flowers she deserves because she did well for us. Next up is Miss Clifton. Miss Clifton is the girl that, you know, was dancing with, um, that John, um, Anthony was dancing with, um, and she kept stepping on his feet. And honestly, I'm just over here like, girl, read the room. Read the room. Because if a man is that uncomfortable dancing with you, clearly there's something up. And she was, she, 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 she did not clock it. She did not clock it. She was doing her best, but she was like, she was making a mess of his feet. And I was just like, at that point, you should have been like, I'm a bit under the weather and should have just begged off and walked away. But alas. Next up is Mary. Mary is um, one of the call girls that Colin goes to see this season. I know a lot of people are upset about, you know, Colin going to see the call, the call girls and going to, you know, um, and going to the brothels but honestly i don't think that is like if you're even if you're upset you can't be upset at the girls they're just doing their job you can be upset at colin but you can't be upset at the girls they're just doing their job and honestly i think that she deserves a raise mary deserves a raise because this man came to her place of business and was not willing to get down to business and basically was like sorry i can't like dude if you know you have penelope featherington on your brain on your every waking and sleeping thoughts why are you in the brothel it was just a waste of her time and honestly should i hope he paid her extra because she deserves a raise i personally think she deserves a raise like why show up if you're not down if you're not down for shit like why show up if you're not down like why why waste our time anyway next up is lord conning this is and it was so pretty too um lord conning is was one of edwina's suitors who basically i think should have read the room because the minute hurricane anthony showed up none of these people had a chance none of edwina's suitors which is like i said infuriating because he ends up not getting with edwina but he does like mess up every single one of their chances so lord corny did not stand a chance unfortunately next up is lord winthrop honestly i'm not going to put him into this is sparta because he's not as bad as some of the other people i had on the list but i'm putting him under their royal annoyingness because he was the one that was basically trying to make chat like conversation with um with marina and then she walked away because i think she saw colin at some point and i was like oh she's being so rude and i'm like dude she's not interested don't be annoying like go look for somebody else anyway but i like, once again that's why he's not in this sparta i found it annoying because i'm like she wasn't rude she was just just as you are over here shopping for a wife she's shopping for a potential partner that fits her and you don't and so she's moved on so stop being annoying next up is daisy mondridge that's the mondridge the, their daughter and of course as we do with all the babies in this in the show she can do no wrong daisy mondridge can do no wrong nick mondridge the next the not the next the current like um lord kent yes sorry 
Because I was like, is he an Earl? I don't think he's an Earl. But anyway, the current Lord Kent, also baby, sweet baby, can do absolutely no wrong in my eye. I moved him to can do no wrong. Then next up is John Mondrich, who is Alice's and Nick's brother. Um, he also, just in case you cannot tell, also can do no wrong. He's a baby. And he was just so excited about the, the upliftment in their status. And I totally get why. Um, so yes, sweet baby can absolutely do no wrong as far as I'm concerned. Next up is, oh yes, I'm certain you, a lot of you are probably like, are they not the exact same? Sorry, I could not get a distinct shot. But this here, just accept it, that this here is Amanda Crane. So um, Amanda Crane is the daughter of George and Marina. Uh, um, the one that, you know, um, the baby that she had, one of the twins that she had. So, of course, can do no wrong. I put her brother, Oliver Crane, in the same category as well. Next, this, for those who are confused as to this face, this is Lord Morrison. Lord Morrison is the one that was dancing with Eloise that um, Violet thought was going to be a great match for her daughter because they were both revolutionaries until he basically mentioned to Eloise that he felt that women were intellectually inferior to men and she basically stopped dancing, walked away from him and was like, you're causing a scene, you're causing a scene. I'm like, dude, you just basically called her like, what you said she was not intelligent you big like are you serious anyway this is sparta eloise is god's strongest soldier i would have drop kicked his ass in the middle of the dance floor this r.i.p <laughs> It's the only dead character on this list that I just had to actually because we saw sarah we saw sarah bassett a bit when she was you know giving birth so this person we never saw, which is why we have no a picture or image of him. But this right here is George Crane. And honestly, I am putting George Crane in because I think he's a very significant part and his story inter interconnects with a lot of characters in the show. Um, I'm putting him under why. George Crane gets a why because like, dude, one, wh why would you have sex with her? Um, like, sure, we get the babies, but why would you have sex with her and not put things in play? to make sure that you know somebody is looking out for her and somebody knows to look out for her like why choices choices george choices because if daphne had not written to the general on virtue of the general's wife telling her to do so and all of that we never would have found out like george what what are you doing <sighs> love 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 and yet and yet Anyway, next up is Nelson. Nelson deserves a raise. Actually, am I putting him in? I'm putting him in girl. Shut up. Nelson is the only. Actually, no, I'm putting him in. I'm putting him in. I'm giving him a raise because I was just like, there were things he said and I was like, I wanted to say shut up. But at the same time, I have to consider the circumstances and the situation within which he made those statements. And so, yes, I'm, I'm putting him under get a raise. For those who are who are curious, Nelson is the one that um, was the maid serve, the man servant, the one that basically came to meet Anthony after Edmund died. I was like, okay, you are now the Viscount. Um, do you want the key to the study? How do you want to announce this information to the villagers? Because they are going to want to know. Um, I'm going to be moving your mother's things out of out of your rooms now. You know, basically all of those these things. And we're like, on one hand, I was like, girl, shut up. He's grieving. Why are you asking all these questions? Who has time? Who has the brain to think about all of this? But at the same time, at the back of my head, I'm like, well, it's to be fair, he is asking pretty valid questions that he should be getting an answer to. Anthony is not in any frame of mind to be thinking that. So Nelson was asking the difficult questions and I, I get it. I honestly get why, you know, and it deserves a reason. It took a while for me to like, before I could work that because I was like, this man should have shut up at the same time. I'm like, but this man is just doing his job. And if he did not like do his job, a lot of things would have floundered. So he was kind of right in that in that regard. Next up is Newton, the Corgi, the Sharma Corgi. I'm certain nobody is surprised by where I'm going to put this good, good, precious boy because it's it is Newton. It's Newton. Like, is anybody surprised? Is anybody not wrong show? Like Newton is bigger than that. 
Newton is bigger than that. Not wrong, show. And if you thought New Newton is getting, can do no wrong. Nope. Newton is the season's incomparable. I think everybody can agree with me that Newton is the season's incomparable. Like, Newton is bay. Newton is awesome. And the little glimpse we got of him in season three, I wanted more. I can't believe that we're not going to see Newton again. I love that Corgi. That Corgi is amazing. Hydrate break. It's not as cold as when I started filming this. Next up is this dude over here that could not keep his mouth shut. Rupert Norton. For those that are like, who is Rupert Norton? Rupert Norton is the guy at the art school that basically spilled the beans to Benedict about Anthony giving the donation to the school and being like, oh, you're actually talented. Weird. I thought that with the way in which your brother donated money, like you had no talent. I'm like, dude, that was just you being mean and messy and it was unnecessary and you should have shut your mouth because now Benedict is floundering and we don't have art and it is all your fault. I blame you. So, um, I just wanted him to shut up. I, I honestly wanted him to shut up. Next up is Farmer George. And honestly, I'm going to put Farmer George in wrong show. Hold up. Let me let me move him up. Let me move him up. I'm going to put Farmer George in wrong show. Because I think he's in the wrong show. I think he should have been in a show where basically that's what we do. We just basically see him farm and then discover interesting, innovative farming techniques that he's able to delight in. Because for those that are unaware who farmer george is farmer george is the one in the in queen charlotte that george basically the farmer that george basically hangs out with the one that he was like oh you need to replace i'm going to replace your oxen with horses because horses do the job better and he was initially being like no but oxen are all i've always known they work better why am i changing it and then eventually he's like you're right your majesty i'm like you know he's in the wrong show i honestly think that he's somebody that you know might be like if if he was in a show where he got to try out different farming techniques and just sees them come like work in a way that astounds him or surprises him it would be so great next up is george crookshan this guy over here so i'm moving him to can do no wrong because he's the one he's the artist that basically told he's the artist that basically told benedict that all the great artists go to the royal um academy of dramatic arts or dramatic art yeah royal academy of dramatic arts sorry and um was like he should apply and i think that like he does not get enough of the credit that he deserves from the fandom because if not for him he's the one that was like i think you're good enough to at least put yourself out there put your art out there and apply to see if you can get in and i think it's incredible i honestly think that you know see if rupert had just learned to shut his mouth not a lot of these things would not have happened but alas some people open their mouths to tell Benedict things he needs to hear. And some people open their mouths to tell Benedict things that he should not have even heard in the first place. But alas. Next up is Cordelia Patridge. I am moving her to wrong show because I do think she's on the wrong show. She's the one that, um, one of the women that Jonathan, I say Jonathan, why am I? I keep saying Jonathan when I want to say Anthony. I think maybe because the actor is Jonathan Bailey. Um, but she's the one that when Anthony was inter interviewing about, you know, how many kids she wants to have and she was kind of floundering and stuff. But then later in, was it this season or season two? She basically tells, um, Eloise that although she does everything her mother tells her to do um she does get her joy and happiness and identity somewhere else and that is in the pages of Lady Whistledown and I'm like girl I feel you 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 are in the wrong show because clearly she just wants the gossip she might be unsure about a lot of things she might be unsure about what children she wants and if she will make a good bride to Anthony Bridgerton but she is sure that she likes gossip and I approve of that so I'm putting her in the wrong show I am actually putting her mother Lady Patridge I'm putting her in girl shut up because she was one of those mamas of the thorn that was like oh pulling her children her daughter away from Cressida because she didn't want her to be corrupted by all in some way which was just which makes no sense like I said like it just zero cents none zilch next up is lord petri tell me when 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 violet was bringing him because this is the the music lover um and the cello player i think that um the that violet introduced to francesca in the hope that she will be able to make a match with him because they both love music and i i'm over here and i'm like did anybody think of him and be like lord petri petri dish was i the only one that my mind went there anyway this is lord petri and i think he needed to have read the room because lord petri is the one that um actually no I, I think he actually did read the room actually i'm not doing him a good service i think he was in the wrong show 
because it's the one that you know when f- was asking Francesca some of the songs that she likes, and she's like, oh, she likes Reese's t- um, trios, and it was like, oh, did you know that you know it's believed that Reese um, wrote that be- like. F- because of his love for someone and all of that and you know that turned francesca off and you could tell that he immediately got the signal that she was not interested and he didn't push and i think that that's why i said i cannot put him on that read the room because uh, he did he did read the room um i just think he's in the wrong show because if it was in a show the right show and it was the lead that would have been a great way to connect about emotions and music and then it would have found like musical love somewhere with the woman of his dreams unfortunately the woman of his dreams is not francesca bridgerton next up is lord cutbill not cutbill needed to read the room he was one of the people that were like you know pushing forward and hoping to hopefully get francesca interested in him and she wasn't um lost in the time actually to be fair it's like at this point i'm going to move him from read the room to why because like why we didn't need all these people we we get it she's considered a catch we get it but all these men that just showed up for like two seconds and we're like none of you are relevant go away like why are you here next up is dominic danbury and this is lady danbury's son the one that you know was the reason why everybody was like okay are we going to inherit is your son going to inherit his father's title now that he's passed because lord danbury was the first of the elite peerage that died after the great experiment when their titles were confirmed third on them and now it became a case of okay so now that's what happens we, we we it's it's not an established line so we that we just got these recent titles do our kids get to inherit and dominic was the trailblazer because he was the one that you know um was officially confirmed as yes is the one that is going to inherit his father is the new lord danbury and um therefore you know basically sell things for the rest of the rest of the people in in their in their peerage and so therefore can do no wrong because he's also a baby he's also a baby speaking of babies baby dankworth baby, Dan- baby dankworth is ari dankworth and, Pre- and prudence's um prudence Frederington's daughter and she's adorable and look at her like i'm just grateful that it was not that garish yellow philippa you need to start experimenting more like orange is still bright but at least orange is better than the yellow that we we're getting and so we are mush- moving her to can do no wrong because she's a baby she's a baby and she can do no wrong absolutely no wrong next up is walter dundas and honestly i put him in girl shut up i'm sorry like i know some people were like yeah they were hoping that Portia gets caught i was like i do not want Portia to get caught and this man was annoying me it just kept he just came kept eating like stuff in their houses and then just saying horrible things and he just felt like he was taking the light and the father he caught her in its trap of course penelope now coming out and like she told her mother she's like you can tell him that this is where the money came from it came from me i have been leading whistle down all this while i'm like ha ha ha, ha. you have been caught also now there's an air so ah, ah, ah. the federating line is still secured but anyway as i was saying i just wanted him to shut up and i was grateful that you know because it just it brought this level of tension because i did not want Portia to be caught and i know there are a lot of people that wanted her to be caught but i was not among those people and so therefore every time he showed up on screen and he was he started yapping i just wanted to zip his mouth zip his mouth like boy bye next up is sasha sasha is the second sex worker that colin was with as with mary i think that she deserves a raise because once again colin came and was playing in their collective faces with regards what he wants and what his desires are and i'm like dude you should have figured out that who you want is penelope instead of wasting this busy women's time so i think they deserve a raise they should have gotten a little bit extra for the work they had to do next up is lady smite smith and her husband and honestly i just think that they can do no wrong personally um because of the fact that one they were the ones that you know um they were the ones that basically set things in motion because it was them coming together and of course we're not going to talk about lord danbury but it was them coming together that made agatha realize that her son's line is not secure her son's inheritance is not secure and there's still the the issue the problem of is he going to inherit now that his father's passed and so it was lady smite smith 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 oh, sorry it was lady smith smith and lord smith smith coming and leading the charge to press agatha with regards to this question that made her start actually considering it and i honestly i think that you know they can do no wrong in my eyes plus they do um, produce quite a number of musically challenged girls if you read the other spinner stories you'll be able to see um 
but yes, they raised the most musically challenged girls, and I would I would always appreciate and love them for that. So <laughs> next up is Lord Stanley, and Lord Stanley, I am putting in read the room because he was one of the many men that thought that they had a chance with Eloise, and I'm like, read her, read the room, read the body language. She's just not that interested. She's not into you. Keep it moving. So um yeah, read the room. Next up is Lord Stanton, and I'm putting Lord Stanton in. This is Sparta! Why? Because of the fact that one, he was one of the men, he was one, one of the men that actively laughed at Penn in her face, in her presence to her face. When the news broke about, oh, you know, she asked Colin for help in finding a husband. He was also one of the people that felt that Colin could do better than Penn. Um, he add all those unnecessary opinions about Lord Deblin's vegan ways. I'm like, who asks you? Who asks for your opinion? Who cares what you have? Who cares what you have to say? And finally, he was the one that basically referred to Cressida as or else porn when the news broke that she is Lady Whistledown. And I'm like, I'm just upset because one, Cressida did not deserve that. But also by extension, that means he's calling Penelope the true Lady Whistledown hellspawn. He's always going to be down in the pits as far as I'm concerned. Next up is Alan Ramsey. Alan Ramsey is one of the, one of two royal portraits artists that we meet in Queen Charlotte. I say two because it's important. Um, Alan, I think deserves a raise because he's one, he had to draw charlotte without he had to draw the royal a royal wedding portrait without the king being present and then even whilst he was doing that he still had to basically have this be right caught in the middle argument between queen charlotte and princess um the dowager princess augusta who basically wanted her sorry i'm moving this to disasteries who basically wanted her um her daughter-in-law to be painted lighter right because she didn't want to show her skin so dark and charlotte was like no paint my skin the color it is and princess augusta is like no you're going to leave it light and i'm just like let give this man a raise and let this man do his job like wh why are you all stressing the poor artist who just wants to do his job and earn his key next up is henry reed henry reed is um lord danbury's um lawyer so he's the one that Agatha came to meet after Lord Danbury had passed and he, he was the one that informed her that, oh, her husband basically has spent all their money and she's basically penniless because of the fact that an elevated status meant that he was spending more to suit that status and all of that. And when she was like, what is she to do? This man was like turned to the benevolence of a male relative or remarry. And I'm like, shut up, shut, shut up. Like, Next stop are Reggie and Tom. And honestly, I'm, this is going to be controversial, I think. Reggie and Tom are the ones that... Um, are the ones that... No, actually, I don't think it's going to be very controversial. But Reggie and Tom are the ones that basically um, Archibald set, gave a... Uh, what do you call it? Gave a... Placed the bet with. With the house. And then they realized that he had basically conspired with Will. To throw for will to throw the match so that was how he made a lot of money off of them and they basically had him killed and i think that they were in the wrong show they, they would fit they would go perfectly well in like a mafia show i honestly think that they would go great fantastic brilliantly well in a mafia show like tony soprano would love them tony soprano would l love them so i think they're in the wrong show and i don't think i don't think it's even a wrong I don't think it's a wrong assessment. I think it's actually a pretty... I think a lot of people would agree with me. Next up, Lord Remington. All of us love Lord Remington. I think we all loved him. Is the one that, you know, basically was like... Was on a wheelchair and was chatting with Penn. I was like, oh, you know, she should call on him later on. And he loves Lady Whistledown. And I'm just like, honestly we should have gotten more of him i think he's in the wrong show i think because of the fact that you know this entire thing she was slotted or slated to um be with colin kind of like messed up his chances because i honestly think that they would have done great together the minute like if she, he had been the one she wanted to marry and he had found out that she was lady whistledown he would have been ecstatic he would have been through 
the roof. None of all that responses we got, we call it like he would have been beyond thrilled. I think he's in the wrong show. Next up is Farmer Roberts. Farmer Roberts is the one that basically informed, um, they informed Daphne and Simon after they married and moved to Cliveden about, you know, the concerns of the populace and how, um, and how basically, um, they are paying three times the rent. Um, you know, things are kind of hard for everybody and all of that. And basically brought to their attention, the financial um, constraints of their people, of the villagers. And I think he deserves a raise for that. I think all the villagers who did not know what he did for them in bringing this, uh, this matter to, um, Simon's notice, because Simon thought his father's steward was handling it. And it was farmer Robert. that was like, we've not seen your father's steward in years since your father passed. What are you talking about? Um, so I honestly think that he deserves a raise because he basically helped secure and helped his people to speak to the person whose land or whose land they were on and who basically needed to have this information. So I personally think he deserves a raise. This, however, this is Sparta! Lord Rutledge can choke. Like, yes, I understand why. Um, and I understand the pressing order of it. And like I said, I get it. Like if it was that Marina did want to marry quickly and, you know, cover all of that scandal and still have her kids um, provided for, like if, you know, um, if Philip had not showed up, it would have been a good alternative. I just, that scene where he was checking her teeth and touching her, like it was examining meat, examining meat. I wanted him drop kicked down to the depths of hell so yes then there's paul suarez lady tilly's friend the one that basically gave us um benedicts that confirmed secured ben's pan awakening i think he's on the wrong show because honestly um you know he needed to be in a show where he can basically explore everything he wants to the fullness of what he wants and who he is and i don't think bridgerton is the show for him at least not at this time um also because i i don't know if he would have loved or if he was falling for benedict like none of benedict's partners have been positioned as falling in love with him it's more of a benedict bridgerton just has so much love to give and so they come and pass through his life in that manner um but yes i do think he's in the wrong show i wish he was in a show where he can be the main center of his story somebody that loves art that you know occasionally has sex with his best friend um but he's also looking for a third and a way to um draw have a closer connection and bond i honestly think you know it could work next is lord thompson lord thompson is the girl shut up like he has to be he's the one that was dancing with daphne and basically was telling her that oh his mother when he marries his mother will move in will move into the their home like his home with his wife and that his father suggested it and i'm just like boy what what are you saying like shut up you're never going to get married this way shut up nope nope Th this is not going to get you anybody interested in you just shut up and keep it moving and then this is dr walker the second doctor remember the second doctor i talked about the one that helped with the birth of hyacinth um i definitely for sure think it deserves a raise um because of the fact that he was the one that clearly told anthony because when they were like oh there's a problem they might lose you know they might lose violet or they might lose the child or whatever like who should they save and anthony was on because i repeat is dealing with the grief is the one that was like we will save i will save it like he made the promise that i would save your mother and your sister and he succeeded like one of the few not useless doctors in the entire course of this show give him a raise the man has earned it the man deserves it then there's lady wallace lady wallace is just going to be in girl shut up because she's the one that was talking after the cancelled um wedding between Edwina and Anthony, I was like, she wonders why it was cancelled. Edwina cannot possibly do better by a vi than a Viscount. And I'm like, girl, shut up. Also, it's, it's Kate is going to do the Viscount. Edwina is going to do someone else. So, like, mind your business and shut up. And then we have Lord Weaver, one of Daphne's suitors, the one that was dancing with her. Great dancer, but very boring. The one that was an absolute snooze fest. And I was like, dude, read the room. You don't stand a chance. There is no way after she just finished laughing and chatting and kicking with Simon, she's going to be in any way chatty like you're going to be you can compare as a conversationalist it's just not going to work so 
um, I say read the room. And then there's Benjamin West, the second painter. Remember I said that there were certain royal portrait painters. Two of them, Benjamin West is the second one. And honestly, I also think he deserves a raise as well. Because in Queen Charlotte, it was his responsibility. I'm trying to move him because ugh, it's so... Uh -huh. Oh yes, so we're moving him to deserves a raise. Because in Queen Charlotte, it was his responsibility to paint the royal portrait of Charlotte with her kids. And it, when she was you know because her mind was all focused on she needs she needs babies she needs heirs and all of that and she leaves annoyed and then her kids also leave after her and brims and she wanted to pack her because it's like okay like my subject has gone and brims was like nah the queen is still seated there her kids are still there you need to continue drawing and my guy had no choice but to draw even though his subject have gone like they are not there anymore that man deserves a raise that that like just for that emotional torture that Brimsley put him through, he deserves a raise. Then we have Miss Weston. She was the one that he was dancing with, one of the women he was interviewing and dancing with. And I'm going to put her in um, Can Do No Wrong. And I would explain why I'm giving her Can Do No Wrong. I'm putting her in Can Do No Wrong because even though she did do wrong because she was a horrible dancer and she was the one that just kept missing her steps and like the last person that Anthony danced with and then got so upset and left the ball to go outside to the courtyard which is where he was talking with his friends and then you know kate was following him sort of following him and then she overheard and then they had their second meet i think that like if not for her they might not have had their second meet at that point in time so i personally put her in kaduno wrong because she kind of helped my ship she kind of helped anthony set sail she contributed immensely to that so sis you might have been a horrible dancer but you were a perfect matchmaker and for that i thank you for your service and then there's lord widing this piece of this asswipe um okay it's not as bad because maybe it's just one thing he did no actually i'm still putting him here this is sparta he's the one that was with his friends and then told Penelope unprovoked and unasked and was like oh are you looking for someone else to help you find a husband and they all laughed he was the instigating incident for that particular scenario and I still want to drop kick him down a boulder somewhere so he can be lost forever to time I detest this man but now we're making it to you know the final set of things so here, I'm putting Julie Andrews, but not Julie Andrews. I'm just saying that her voice as Lady Whistledown because it's clear that we are never getting her again now that um, Penn has come forward as Lady Whistledown. So it's probably Nicola's voice we'll be hearing moving forward. But I am moving um, Julie Andrews' Lady Whistledown, the voice. And at this point, I'm certain nobody is surprised at where I am going to, where I have plans to put her. Because, like, of course, um, I am putting her as the seasons incomparable you know so right here because she's fantastic and i would forever miss her voice as lady whistledown i would probably rewatch a lot of the old not probably i will be rewatching a lot of the older series just so that i can hear i can keep hearing her voice um and then there is this simon's tongue <laughs> i brought this back from my old ranking um because of course i am going to rank simon's tongue it is exquisite and it is of course the seasons incomparable because that tongue was what got me consistently watching bridgerton like after season like i was like uh well you know it's okay and then that tongue came out and i was like i am in for the long haul thank you anthony sideburns whoever thought i was not going to include this in it <laughs> this is sparta yes i need that i need the sideburns to die to die several deaths several deaths and i like some of y'all like it good for you it can never be me it can never be me and finally daphne bridgerton's this is sparta i hate those bangs i hate those bangs with a burning passion i think they are the ugliest bangs and i do not know why why do the, they made such a conscious effort to give her those like it it was not it was not the best for Phoebe. It was not pleasing in any way. But yes, those are my rankings. If you stay to the end, thank you. Um, and that is it. That is the final ranking. 175 named characters with lines. Um, let me know. Did you guess correctly? Um, of course, this 175 is minus Daphne's bangs and Simon's tongue and 
um, Julie Andrews as Lady Whistledown and Anthony's Sideburns, for example. But 875. So let me know if it is that you guessed it right. Um, if you enjoyed this video in any way, in any capacity, please like it. Subscribe if you... So please like it. Check out my other videos. If you like what you see, then consider subscribing. A huge thank you to my patrons. You all support me and I love you. Um, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description bar. If you can afford it or if it's something that you want to. I make new videos three times a week. Mondays are for anime manga, Wednesdays are for movies and TV shows, and Fridays are anything I want really. New videos drop at 5 p.m. EST. Whilst you wait for my newest video, if you have not seen it yet, then maybe you might consider checking out my last Bridgerton ranking video. Until next time, do remember obsessing over the things you love, perfectly valid coping mechanism.